2022 thing... is the year of being offended, right? Everybody's offended by everything. I mean, I'll tell you how bad it is, right? The other day, I took the piss out of myself and a complete stranger got offended. Why have I got a cock? Well, he that's wouldn't be mascot. a man if he didn't have a cock below his waist, would he? Yeah, exactly that. Exactly that. Well, but, it was um, expected to have below his waist, a potato. But that's our, that's our mascot. He's called Matt. Yeah. Matt the Hancock. So, Mickey's... Did you see that somebody on Sarah Cox's show on Radio 2 yesterday, on their live phone in, called him a C-U-N-T? I heard about that. Oh, and she, <laughs> live and on she air. she coughed and kind of like... Well, well, you can't say cunt when you're broadcasting. Well, no. She, she, it wasn't her. It was a fucking caller that phoned in, asked for a song. He asked for a Queen song and then said, because cause Hancock is a... <laughs> I'll tell you what, Mickey, I am well impressed with that camera. The fans it, are in lock. That camera really has made a difference. I can see that in the colour of my face yeah. on the screen. Can you see the difference, Tracy? And white. I can, absolutely. Uh, it's not. He's not all white and ghostly. Yeah. You, you don't look at death's door now, Mickey. And you don't I look did, like Robert I, England I, anymore. What have you been up to this week? I went to Battersea Power Station yesterday because it's all open to the public with their very, very expensive shops and... Um, and everything like that. I mean, seriously expensive shops. There's Gordon Ramsay has got two locations there as well. One called Bread. Your audio's out of sync. Oh no. Yep. Hang on, let's see if I can talk something out here. I'm talking. Uh, yeah, the Gordon Ramsay has got uh, two um, locations <coughs> there. One called Bread and one called Pizza, I think. Um, and. Uh, the pizza one isn't too bad. It's like kind of like an all-you-can-eat. But the bread one is. Um, I noticed that he that they were selling uh, beef Wellington at fifty pounds, and it's like, yeah, that's not aimed at the likes of me. Um, but they managed to retain the shell of the power station and the roof and um, uh, you know bits and pieces like that, and some of the old workings as well, the pipes and uh you know just isn't that the word somebody pushed the kid off the roof the other no year? that was the tate tate britain yeah oh, that the was tate, tate britain that one but again that was an old power station uh and i think yeah. it was yeah. designed by the same person who did battery power station and um yeah so it's all opened up to the public there's all sort of um there's a there's a skate rink at the moment and there's places you're back in sync now i'll put you back in sync Yay! Yep. thank you um uh there are places that I don't know if she'd fit in the sink, to be fair. No, think has gone out of sink now. <laughs> uh, yeah, so so there was lots of there were places to eat and drink, quite quite a variety as well. Not all the same, not all samey same. Is there was like a pizza, there was noodles, there was curry type, not quite Indian, but like Malaysian. As I said, lots of expensive shops. I mean, um, I didn't I didn't take a photo of it, but one of the expensive watches was like 180 grand. Yeah, I'll have two of those, please. Um, right. But it was good that they did keep the. Why would you have two? Well, j just because 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 there's hundred eighty thousand pounds I can afford. I, I had a mate. I, well, I've still got him. He's he's, he's around. He, he he actually had a genuine Rolex that he paid twenty two thousand. I like the way yeah, you said well, yeah, he had. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's, he's so on he Facebook. Did at one time you know, have you know one. what I think of people on Facebook, maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, he had one. Um, and he he had a Rolex Oyster Perpetual, twenty two grand he paid for it. And he was constantly showing off about it, so much so that eventually, uh, one night I decided that I'd put a stop to his showing off. So he's <coughs> showing off, he's showing off this bird, his Rolex, and and she was like mega impressed. And I went up to him and I said, uh, Dave, what's the time? His name's Dave Murray. I said, Dave, what's the time? He looks at his Rolex. He said, Well, on my Rolex, it's it's like ten past eight. And I said, Well, that's interesting. He said, Why is that? And I said, Because my ten quid Timex says exactly the same time as well. And I walked away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get on, Tracy. I bought a Rolex for a tenner once. Oh, a, a fake one. Yeah, you could tell it's fake because it went. Yeah. Instead of. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So the shops. Are, and oh, oh God, there are just so many very well-off or think they're well-off people walking around. I mean, the place was packed, and outside the grounds was packed. But I tell you, the the they. It, 
on the outs from the outside it just re they've really quite done quite a good job it's such a shame that they've built lots of flats around it so you can't stand on chelsea bridge and see it anymore but it's all opened up so you can go and stand next to it and look up at it and they i didn't go up it this time but they've opened the chimney one of the chimneys um and uh, like for an experience as you go up i've seen a friend of mine uh, put a video on facebook and as you go up there's like leds that go up like that and then you get to the top of the chimney and it's a viewing platform a 360 oh. viewing platform so you, no, you're right yeah you can walk all the way around it and look out and that which uh at the top it's 23 pounds on the day to do that and i thought no i'm not doing that like yesterday i don't care if it's fucking free i wouldn't be doing it i, w I wouldn't mind it to be honest no 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 no, no. i ain't shop. going up there and standing on the top of a fucking chimney no thank you it's not quite as tall as the chard chard it's not quite the shard of the shard um um i'm i'm not sure how tall it is in relation to my block i'd have to look because it may well be that it's only just like taller than my block and um i don't think it's like ceiling to floor windows so it's not like you're going to feel like you're going to fall out but um but yeah if, if you're in the area it's worth a visit but there isn't anything like <sighs> I don't know how to, you know, like as in it's not it's not a destination, although that's what they've tried to make it. They it's not a destination. If you're in the area, you're going to be in the area. It's <coughs> worth a look. If you want to go skating somewhere, it's worth a look. Why are we on fire? Is the pubs on no, fire? No, we're, we're not on fire. It's me. I'm just trying to sort my green screen out. <laughs> um, I've got a question, by the way, for, yes. for Mickey. Okay. Uh, is, it, is it your height you're scared of, Mickey? Yes. So how come you're going on an aeroplane? Huh? How can I go in an aeroplane? Because that's yeah. different. In, in what way? I don't know, mate. It's a, okay, it's a, just, just it's a mental thing, right? Now, I can't... I will not go up the outside of a chimney. No. But I'll quite have to sit in an aeroplane. See, no. now that's what I don't understand. First of all, I'll say that I have absolutely no fear of heights, all right? I can do all of that shit. Well, I could do when I wasn't dying of cancer, but I can do all of that shit. I've actually no fear of heights at all. But I've often wondered, right, how people who are afraid of heights can go in an aeroplane. I'm thinking, well, if you're afraid of being 100 foot up, then you must be fucking cacking yourself at 33,000 feet. No, it doesn't bother me in a plane, to be fair. Well, then, next time you get the chance to go up a chimney, just pretend you're in a plane. No, I'm not out in the wind and the fucking rain and the fucking... No. Oh, you've never flown EasyJet, then? <laughs> uh, no, and I don't intend to. Or, or Ryanair. <coughs> No. Can I just say, can I get this out of the way? Evening, Steve Miles. Missing you. <laughs> Who are you talking to? That's Steve Miles out there. Apparently he's watching. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I know what Mickey means, actually. I mean, I don't want to go up in a plane, but it's not a heights thing. I think once you, if you're, from what I've seen in the pictures, when you're up in a plane, you're so high up that it becomes like it becomes less perceivable how high you are but when you're in a building standing on a ledge no but on on the floor looking out of a window and you're looking oh, right, down inside a building. building and go as high as you like inside i thought you meant the bloody chimney you went up the outside of oh, it oh god no no you go up the inside of the chimney ah right yeah. oh, that's so bad oh fucking hell no no I no 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 about going up the outside no, 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 no. They may well do that as a... As a I'll tell you as a what, my, grand, my grandson, I, I think, I can't Belgium? No, Holland? The hotel they stayed in had this bloody ride on the top that swang out. Oh. Over the end of the, end of the building. Oh. Yeah, he went on. I was got photographs of him sort of... Yeah. Uh, I couldn't do that. No. In Las Vegas, they've got a roller coaster that goes around the outside of the top of a building. I'll yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. No, no, um, no, 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 yes, no. There's, a, there's a restaurant in there's a restaurant right by the Liverpool Street railway station called Sushi Samba. It's on the top floor of a block of it's on the top floor of a tower block. And the way you get to it is from an elevator, a glass elevator. Glass, glass bottom from the outside. The number of people I used to obviously when I was an Uber driver I used to pick people up from there. The number of people I'd drop off and then see at least one in the party shitting themselves and not wanting to do it. It was funny. <laughs> I don't like cable cars either. 
I love all that as well. No, I don't like them because they wobble about too much. Oh, you'd hate the one going up. Uh, you'd hate the one that goes up from uh, in Cape Town, then that goes up the top of Table Mountain. Yep, I wouldn't do that. But not only does it wobble about, but it also spins in three hundred and sixty degrees. I mean, we 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 went up the mountain in, in um, is it Mount Tidy, isn't it? In um, Mount Tidy. Yeah. Tenerife, yeah. Went up there, and I wouldn't go in the chairlift up to the end bit. No, I stayed in a little restaurant at the bottom there. Um, <laughs> no, I wasn't going up there. That was windy enough as it was. I can't go up there anymore. My lungs won't let me. Yeah. My favourite place up there, but my lungs won't let me anymore. I'll go as far as, like, they got that restaurant place at the bottom of the cable. Yeah, 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 I know you what know, you know, yeah. that's as far as we go. Uh, Donna don't want to go up there either, so. I've been all the way up to the top, and then I've walked from the cable car station right to the summit. But the last time I was up there, Arm um, Sean told me to get off, get down, because my lips were going blue. And oh, I must yes. admit, I was... Huh? Oh, yes, no, I was remembering you telling us. Yeah, so uh, my lips started going blue, so she told me to come down. Because the trouble is, you're the last person that knows that you're actually getting ill. Yeah. And she noticed my lips were going blue, and I didn't notice it until we were halfway down on the cable car, and I realised that I was having a lot of difficulty breathing. Um, but once I got down to where Mickey was talking about, I was fine. But that's because you know, it's, it's a good 500 feet lower. Yeah. Uh, yeah, best pal, I'm sure you're scared of lifts. That's probably because you take fireworks in them. Yeah. Just if you didn't take fireworks it. in them, it wouldn't happen, would it? I don't worry about the lift door not opening. I worry about the fact that it might actually drop. And that is actually a, um, what's the word? Um, it's Phobia? No, 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 not a phobia. It's, it's not, um, it's not, oh, I can't think of the word. It's, it's, Oh my God! What is the word? You stop wibbling, woman, and get it out. No. And stop no, playing with them boobs. Look, you keep doing <laughs> this, and it's getting me all excited. I, I can't think of the word, but it's 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 something that you shouldn't be worrying about. So whatever that word is, it's something you shouldn't be worrying about because uh, uh, the lifts won't drop and kill you because they've got brakes and they've also got secondary brakes. And there's also a thing at the bottom that stops you from slamming into the floor. It yeah, it's called a spring. Exactly. <laughs> it shoots you back up. <laughs> it, exactly, a few times. But um, so it's not a it's, it's not a thing that you should be worrying about. I don't worry about <laughs> the doors not opening, but I do worry about them the, the lift dropping. And the lift, the lifts do drop, and I've had that a couple of times, but the brakes get slammed on, so you find yourself dropping for a bit, and then there's a sudden stop. <laughs> and that's not very nice, and that's the bit that I don't like. I'm okay about the lift door not opening as long as it opens eventually. I don't, I don't have any... Do you know, I've only got one phobia, and that's moths. Yes. I hate moths. Yeah. I will run a mile to avoid a moth. Actually, that, that also is butterflies because the nasty experience I had was in Great Yarmouth, not 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 far from Mickey. Um, because they just opened. This is going back a few years. They just opened a place called Butterfly World in Great Yarmouth. Yeah. And me and my then missy said, "Yeah, let's go in there." They look cute. I went in there and I didn't realise at the time that my moth phobia also meant butterflies. Oh my god, I nearly shit myself. It was the most nerve wracking experience I've ever been. And I know it's daft to be frightened of butterflies, right? But if you've got a phobia, if you're somebody that's got a phobia, you'll completely understand how I felt. Mm. I couldn't wait to get out of there. And I, I, this was this was 20 or more years ago, 30 or more years ago. And I actually saw my doctor about it, and he referred me to a trick cyclist who said that obviously what had happened is I'd obviously had a traumatic experience as a child with a moth. Maybe I'd swallowed one or something like that. And that's where my phobia came from. And the only way to get over it is to desensitise myself gradually by um, keep going back to that environment. And I, I tried, and I just can't do it. I'm still scared of moths now. Um, and I know what it is. It's because I can't predict. It's the same with moths and butterflies, right? You can't predict their flight pattern. No. Yeah. That's the problem. And that's what he reckons it was. It reckons I must have had a traumatic experience as a child. And because mm. I can't predict that thought, <coughs> their flight pattern, I think it's going to happen again. But... I can't stand tiger. them. When everybody laughs at me, my kids laugh at me when, I'm, when I come across the moth. Right. So it's a, it's a tiger moth for your next model, then? No. Atlas moth? No. A tiger moth? It's a fucking aeroplane. No, I'm, I'm trying to decide what to do for my next model, Mickey. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about building London Bridge just to wind you up. 
I ain't got London Bridge. No, I know, but you've got a model that you haven't touched, haven't you? I did touch it the other day and put it back in this packet again. <laughs> oh! The instructions make absolutely no fucking sense. Or oh, there isn't any. Yes, it's there just is. a yellow sheet of paper, isn't it? Yeah. It'll make no fucking sense. Hold them up. I've got to go in. The, I've got to go in the cupboard and get them. Yeah. Go on. Oh. Make no sense. Make perfect sense. I'm, to not, me. I'm surprised I was the only one that picked up on what Mickey just said. Mickey said that he got it out. That he got it out last night and then looked at it once and then put it back in its packet. <laughs> so I wasn't going to say anything, Tracy. Well, I have no words for things like that. <laughs> That's how I like Leave it. my packet out of it. <laughs> oh, dear. Got his zip. Yep, that's it. That's perfect. Yep, that's exactly how the instructions should be. I could make that model from those. <laughs> it's got blue dots on it. You've got to bend this and bend that and fucking... One of them's a flat piece. You've got to bend nearly 360 degrees. <laughs> I thought you were going to say not nearly 360 times. Uh, oh, the top you have to bend in and out like that. Files. Yeah. I've got all the gear and no idea. <laughs> yeah, well, why don't you, why don't you try building it? Uh, you see how far out. I've got? Did you see how far I've got with mine? Little model. <laughs> <laughs> what, your metal one? or your? No, my bike. Well, I know you had to take the tank apart again. Yeah, I've resprayed that today. Little nail files. What else we got in here? Oh, little... Hey, it's interesting just watching what Mickey's pulling out of his bag, because he doesn't look a very big bag, but he's pulling loads of shit out of it. No, it's... Uh, I see... Oh, it's a tooth thing. It's a dental it's pick. It's not a tooth thing. It's a dental pick. It's a dental pick. But... Yes. Yeah. But for my modelling. Yeah. What but I he hasn't do. started. <laughs> it's got all one. the gear anyway. Yeah, like I said, all the gear, no idea. Eh? I am currently building. It's it's almost finished now, apart from the fuel tank, which I've had to respray. A one twelfth scale Yamaha VX eleven hundred Virago. He's doing his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> what? Mickey's doing his teeth. I was. <laughs> oh, cool! It's finished. It's not finished. You need no, to the tank's not on. It, look, what have you got left to do on it? The tank. Oh, oh tank. right, okay. Yes, so it was going in and out. Sorry, I, I can see now. I've even got the speedos. Oh. I've even got all the cables done. Look, I've got the brake cables. Yeah. Punch cable. The uh, Appalachian Trail, eh? That's up in the Appalachian them. Mountains, obviously. Oh, that's... Even the wheel, the wheel's turned. Isn't it cold up there this time the of the year? The suspension works. There you go. Yeah, it's looking really good. So, Wayne, that's what Steve's putting together, and what Mickey isn't what putting together yet, I think, is the Tower of London. But as it's not, it's, as it's only just come out of the bag and it's still in bits, I think... It's gone back in the bag. It's gone, it's gone back, back in the bag, bag yeah. It's gone back in the bag, never to see the light of day until 2023. Because <laughs> Mickey doesn't like metal models, but there's the last metal model I made. You might recognise that. It's <laughs> the last one I made, which involved bending bits of metal, Mickey. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I can't bend it. it like Beckham. The ball, ball. Yeah, Iron Man. And the one I made before Iron Man, which was really complex. Your ship. The ship. Oh, there you go. Was that, was that a metal one as well? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah metal. Okay. <coughs> it's all metal. Detailed. Side the the yeah. detail on this is stunning. Yeah, I just said it's really detailed. Lovely. That's the USS Missouri. Very famous ship. Who can tell me without Googling what the USS Missouri is most famous for? Being sunk in uh, Pearl Harbor. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And it was no attached in Pearl Harbor, but it wasn't sunk. <coughs> Very famous ship. Wayne, oh. Wayne says the Appalachian or Appalachian says it runs entire length of East Coast, almost 3,200 kilometres. He's walking about 10 kilometres of it. <laughs> I'll tell you what it was famous for. 
It's where the Japanese signed the surrender in Tokyo Bay in 1945. Oh. They did it on the deck of the Missouri. Oh. Ah. It would have been easier to write it on a bit of paper. My dad was on the USS Mansfield in Vietnam, Wayne says, before laughing his head off about the paper joke. Yeah, Banksy. Right, Banksy. The reason I mentioned about Banksy is, um, Guess, the fashion retailer in Oxford Street, Banksy's on Twitter right now telling people to go to Guest and, and help themselves to close from the shop. The reason he's doing that is because they are using his artwork without his permission in a window display. Fantastic. So he says if it's all right for them to use his artwork without yeah. asking him. It's all right for other people to go in there and take the clothes there without asking them. That's fabulous. Oh, I mean, I think he's got the right idea. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not condoning. I mean, I, I, I just that's a fabulous Banksy. I, I, I don't know if you heard, but during the during the lockdown, he did four or five round here, one yes, on the side yeah. of the building, and the guys, they actually took the fucking whole wall down that this painting was on and sold it, and had the wall rebuilt. Sold it to some geezer in America for about two million quid. Oh, huh? Yeah. Just but, quickly. But, just I mean, quickly. he's not happy with that because he he said it was there for uh, the people, like you know. Let but. me just quickly answer Wainiac before I come back to you. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, Wainiac. Yes, I have done aeroplane models. Um, I've yeah, I did. Got got a Mercy stuff Smith BF one hundred and nine. I've got a Supermarine Spitfire Mark Four on the ceiling, and I did a Lancaster as a kid. Yeah, and I've got a couple of airplane kits to build. So I've got a couple of airplane kits to build. Yeah, sorry. I just wanted to answer that before it went off the screen. Back to Banksy you now. But they've uh, the, the rest of them that are in low stuff here, they've actually covered in um, Perspex. Yes, so that, I saw um, that. I saw that. So that people can't uh, deface them or whatever. But that guy who took the wall down, he's right foot. He don't even live in low stuff. <laughs> and I saw that. Comes from London. Owns the building, mm. uh, which he's trying to convert into flats, which they won't let him because it's in the middle of a fucking town. So he knocked the whole wall down, sold the fucking picture. The, 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 this is the thing what about Banksy is that he's always I can't remember exactly what he said, but he's always like said that it's like for the people, it's yeah. art. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Um, you know, no doubt he's some kind of millionaire, billionaire, or whatever now for whatever reason, but. And then, you know, people say, oh, he's not an artist, he uses stencils. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. We've had people cutting sharks in half and that and w winning prizes for that being art. Um, he, and other people have said that he's nothing but better than a, um, a graffiti artist. But, yeah. It, which, yeah. It's but still art. It's still art. It's still art, yeah. When, Some graffiti when, is fantastic. Yeah, when you well, when you get people, look, you know, when 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 there's been graffiti artists who who have died because they've been like on the railway line or whatever, putting their tag in and things, and they, and people say he was an artist, graffiti artist, and everyone goes, no, he wasn't. Um, and there there, there, there there's so many different levels <coughs> of, of graffiti artists. One of them they're just sticking their name on the side of something, and the other one is doing Banksy. Mm. And there's the whole spectrum in between. But um, I, but I've always liked Banksy for the fact that uh, he, he's, he's done for the people yeah. and he Perfect. makes statements about it. He makes, yeah. not about it, he makes statements with it. He's not just, he's not usually not just going, yeah, I'm just going to spray this piece of crap on the side here because that's... He's recently done some in uh, Ukraine as well, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. You know, so... Yeah. Talking about Ukraine. You know who's been to Ukraine today, don't you? Sunak. Go on. Rishi Sunak has been to oh. Ukraine today. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. I need I need I need I need I need a share. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Oh, no. That's probably really... an overshare, wasn't it? Yeah, that it was wasn't. TMI bit. that was. Definitely please, TMI. Please, please please turn your mic off this oh, time. Please do, yeah. I've heard enough <laughs> I wanna hear the grunting and the groaning. <laughs> you, you hear the pee, you, you hear the flow and the, and the yeah yeah of the peas. Um, yeah, Sunak he went to see um, Zelensky. Zelensky, yeah. Yeah, today, and um, I haven't seen you. Probably saw no more than me. So, 
What well, no, no, the I don't know a lot because I didn't read it. I just saw that he'd been there. Yeah, same. And um, and he'd he'd still um, guaranteed our support still. Um, so it's no change to what it was before. Good. And that's all really that I know about it. The um, couple of pictures that I saw, Sunak looked so much more statesman-like than Boris turning up like some yes, fucking clown yeah. has been stuffed into a suit. Suited Dragged out of bed, stuffed into a suit, on. and then, yeah, he looked... Like he's a billionaire. He can afford to have somebody do it for him. Yeah, but... Mind you, Boris ain't fucking poor, is he? No, exactly. This is what I mean. All you have to do is comb your damn hair and pull your, pull your jacket down or wear one that fits. I don't either, Wayne, but also... Um, it's a it's it's a good start in that they've managed to push Russia out of a place some places. I, yeah, I, but since but, they did that, Russia started sending bloody missiles in, onto uh, civilian targets. No, I agree. That's a total absolute fucking nutcase. Yeah, no, I know. I agree. I agree. But is this him being desperate, seeing that you know, yeah. no, this is the end? Yeah, it's, well, it's his. It's his way of trying to terrorise people. Yeah. But I think it's having the opposite effect. It's it's making people uh, dig in even harder. Yeah. Um, oh, he just can't see it. He's a fucking idiot. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why some of his people have bumped him off by now. I really don't. Mm. Well, but, yeah. Well, when when I when I think about why they haven't and should they. Um, you kind of what like comes it, after it, isn't it? That's what well, you're exactly. About. This is the thing what comes after it, and what if the person who does it, or like if it's common knowledge within the ranks, mm -hmm. the person who does it, they will be next, they could be their family could be next. It's a you just don't know what kind of hold they might have over a Putin and people might have over whoever does it. So, whoever does it needs to be very clever. A lone person willing to risk it all, and 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 know what's coming next, like you said. Yeah. Because that's the scary thing. If if he died of natural causes, they would then have to have a. Uh, well, I don't know if it'd be an election. They would probably just do what we do and drag the the next person in, and they might be the, even worse. So who knows? But you know, you hear of um, or read of the uh. That the things that Putin could be suffering with. God, I can hear I can hear the toilet so bloody hell. Um <laughs> can hear it washing his ass. And I can hear it. <laughs> you can hear him enjoying it too. <sighs> now they they, oh, say, they say that Putin's got um Parkinson's and cancer and all this kind of stuff and you know, did you enjoy your bum being washed? What? Did you enjoy your bum being washed? Yes, we did. Yeah. Very much. <laughs> very much. Very much. I, go, I, I use that toilet as often as possible. Sometimes, even if I don't want to go to toilet, I use it. <laughs> we could hear that Who you are we talking about? Huh? Putin. Who are we talking about, eh? Putin. Putin. Oh, right, okay, yeah. We've seen a shooting point. by one of his own generals. Oh, that's, what what we, that's what we were just talking about. But who do you replace him with? That's the problem. Anybody. Yeah. Yeah, but who would, who would they replace Rich him with? Yeah. Liz Truss. Replace him with Liz Truss. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be all in the shit then. Have you seen the revolts in the Middle East with the youth against the police? I've seen revolts in China. Yes, the COVID. Against the police. The COVID, yeah. COVID, yeah, in... Uh, I haven't seen them in the Middle East, no. I've seen... I've seen I don't know about revolts, but I've seen the... Um, up, the Not uprising so much, but the um, demonstrations of, uh, you know, women trying to... Uh, not to have the compulsory burqa or compulsory, compulsory head headscarf. I've seen that, but I haven't seen any revolts about it. It's Iran. It, it's Iran, that is. Go. That's Iran. The female population is tired of the way they treat, they're treated there. Yeah, Iran. Is that not the Middle East? 
It is a Middle East, but oh, it's okay. a different Sorry. country in the Middle East. Yeah, yeah, agree. It's just that Wayne said, have you seen the revolts in the Middle East? And Yes. Yeah, sorry. I'm you just said saying it's fact. in Iran that the, the, ah. the, the women are protesting. It's in Iran. Yeah. No, well, I'm, it's good and I'm glad, but it's such a shame that they're sort of invoking the all the um, terrible things upon the, the women that they catch and, and put in prison. They're being imprisoned for it. R.I.P. Twitter. Yes, yes. yes. R.I.P. Twitter is a trending hashtag. I don't know if you know about what you know about Mickey with with, with Twitter and trending, do you? And hashtags. Well, I do know about hashtags and that, but I like to say I don't go on Twitter very often. I've got an no, account. No, well, well, trending you... means it's it's got so many hits or you yeah, know, it's more hits than everybody else. Well, the trending the trending hashtag for just lately is is R.I.P. Twitter because everybody's apparently fucking off from Twitter. All oh, right. And and being fired from Twitter to the point where Twitter's offices in London were closed. Yeah. Oh, they closed so, the London office. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you've got all these people saying RIP Twitter, right? Yeah. And they're fucking off from Twitter. Except they're not fucking off at all. They're just they're just posting the hashtag saying they're going to fuck off, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you've got Elon Musk saying Twitter's had the biggest two days ever. Elon, Elon Musk. Musk saying Twitter has had its busiest two days ever. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised, but it sounded, like, it sounded like you said Ella Mustang. <laughs> Ella Mustang. Well, I don't come with, I'm not, I'm not the one with the subtitles. Yeah. So there's a, bit of a, there's, a bit of a, there's a bit of a disconnect there between what people on Twitter are saying and what's actually happening on Twitter. Well, yeah. There's a lot of these people are saying, a lot of these people are saying they're leaving Twitter. And I, it, I believe I read somewhere, I can't remember who it was, somebody said that Twitter would be gone within a month. Yeah, somebody said Twitter would be gone by the end of this week. But then yeah, it, was, it, it was actually um, some kind of expert professor person said yeah. it at the beginning of this week. Um, yeah. yeah, the thing is, if, if they are seeing an upturn in how busy it is, it's basically everyone coming on there to jump on that hashtag yeah, you should never waste the hashtag. If you see a hashtag trending, try to get it into one of your tweets. Because when someone clicks on that hashtag, they'll see your tweet in in the load load of thing, and that's actually a marketing, <coughs> marketing thing. Never waste the hashtag. So I did, I, I did. I did. I said, "What the fuck the is my, my tweet today?" Said, "What the fuck is it? All these people flouncing with R.I.P. Twitter are not actually fucking leaving." That's it. That's exactly well done. You never yeah. waste the hashtag. And that's that, but that's exactly what it is. It's people, it's people saying they're fucking off and not fucking off. And then it's people like you coming on and saying, why aren't the people who are fucking off actually fucking off? Oh. So, oh. so the Twitter scale is, you know, the graph is going like that because everyone's going, Twitter's going to shit. Come up, you know, I admin a group on Facebook of 70,000 members and we occasionally get a flounce at somebody that leaves, right? Oh, I can't stand the moderation on this group. I'm leaving, so I kick them out. And they basically like, "Why'd you kick me out?" Because you flounced. Because you smell yeah, exactly. You smell a wee. Or the, or the favorite, the favorite thing that I do, the favorite thing that I do, right, Ooh. is I mute them for 28 days. Oh, that's which sweet. means they get a notification every time someone replies to their post, but they can't respond to it. Oh. And for an attention seeker. That is the worst thing you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm one of these people, right? I'm, I'm a great believer in, if you're going to fuck off, fuck off. I like I like directness, right? And I've often said, right, the people I will listen to are the ones that don't say anything. All right, yeah. They yeah. just fuck off. Uh, yeah. of Facebook, are you not using your account? I haven't Ooh. seen... You, sorry, Steve. I haven't seen your stuff. How many times? I tell you what, Tracy, it cracks me up. Like, how many fucking times on Facebook have I posted a message saying I am not using this account? And I'm... then people keep saying to me, "Aren't you using this account?" No, I'm fucking not. I've got no, a message no, up Steve, there. Steve, I, Steve, hey, honestly, I've not seen any posts from you since you got that account. I did. I saw one today, but I think that was a retweet of something he posted on Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> I think. Just well, if you actually account. looked at my account, you'd see that it actually has a constant message saying this account is just reposting of my Instagram 
on my oh, blog the reason, post. The reason I didn't look is because I thought you were still trying to fly under the radar. I pro honestly, nothing's come up. In, I presume that if you were using it, something would appear and nothing's appearing. He's not so, using it. I'm not using it, but no, Instagram it, is also posting to it. If he yeah. was using it or it something's posting to if 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 something if there's any activity on it, there we go. If there's activity on it, I presumed I would see some activity in my feed. Yeah. Let me just go and see. Wait a minute. Oh for fuck four hours ago. Honestly, I'm not seeing it. Pound four, black. Four hours ago and it's the tank. No, I'm not using that account. It's, it's literally it's, it's on the on the blog on the page is a it's also posting from my from my blog and on my news feed it's also posting from my instagram i'm not using i don't trust facebook you know what i found out you know you were here you saw what we saw yeah and i don't trust facebook I'm one just, little bit i'm just astounded that none of this has come up in my my feed at all nothing at all no i'm not using it to facebook because i don't trust them uh, i don't yeah. trust them one little bit no, don't blame you. no i don't blame you i was just um Yes. Also, I missed the drama no, they, on Monday, this Monday just gone. I got up Monday morning to find out that they actually disabled that account as well. Oh, yeah, no. You see, I saw that. You said that in Discord. You said, I've just been banned from Facebook. I said, yeah. again. And then you disagreed with the decision. And yeah, because I uploaded an ID. And, 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 I uploaded an ID to prove I was invited, me. Which is really strange because it was, the same ID, it was the same ID that I upload on the account that they've disabled that they carried yeah. on disabling. Shortly after they banned me on that account, they sent me an they sent me an invite saying, "Can you come and give us your opinion on on our latest business thing?" Yeah, oh, fuck off. We value you as a user. <laughs> yeah, you fucking don't. <laughs> well, look, listen, we're all in the pub, and I'm the only one on the wine. You, you, what are you on, Mickey? The tea? Coffee. Coffee. Yeah. Oh, I've just finished a bottle of orange squash. Drop a I mean, I, I, I've, I've had to give up drinking, haven't I? Um, because the yeah. doctors have told me. They yeah. told me to give it up. They told me to cut it down. I did some research. Did you know that the liver actually repairs itself? Yes. Yes. It's the only uh, organ that does. does. Huh? It's the only organ that does. That's right. Well, I'm pretty sure skin does, Mickey. Well, I said organ. Well, skin's an organ. Internal it... organ, probably. All oh, right, okay. Because I'm pretty sure skin repairs itself. What are you doing, Tracy? Massaging my head. Okay. <laughs> We're in a secret sec. No, I've, I've got um agitation going on. I've just done a really smelly fart. That's well, because you just did a really smelly poop. That was that. I did a poo. Now I've had a really smelly fart. It's normally, I used to do it the other way around. I used to fart and then poo, but. I've, I've, You've I've managed to work out poo. how to do one and not the other. Yeah, I'll probably need another poo. I'm shutting here with my door shut and I've got the fan on and it's just blown it all in my face. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got my own really smelly fart blowing back at me and it's not a pleasant experience. <laughs> the wife and my daughter went down to Lakeside uh, shopping. Uh, I was supposed to have my granddaughter, but that didn't happen because she went to a friend instead. So um, all my plans for today literally went down the fucking pan. Yeah. Oh. So I've been here on my Todd all day, oh. playing computer games. I was going to say, did you manage to get any computer games in? Yeah, on my own. I've been playing on my own. No. I don't mind. I quite like playing on my own. <laughs> playing with myself. Yeah, you better now, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got my cough. Oh, good. I need a wee. So, back in a tick. Oh, my legs. Too much. You, that was over here, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, Shit. <laughs> Talk about overshare, that's an overchair. <laughs> we can see her curtains. Yeah. And a radiator. Hmm. So arthritis. Oh. Oh, you've been suffering with your arthritis. Oh yeah. Oh. I've got it. I've got it there. Yeah. And there on both hands. And it is an absolute nightmare. Especially yeah. when you're doing little th fiddly little things like that motorbike Mickey. It's, yeah. It yeah. is it's an absolute nightmare. But when I spoke to the doctor about it, I, I, I'm, I'm living off this stuff at the moment. Well, yeah, um, Volterol. Yeah, Volterol. Yeah. The, uh, the only, you know, I, I get this on prescription. This is the 2.3%, not the 1% you get in the chemist. Yeah. This is 2.3%. Do you know how much a tube of this is? 
No idea. 18 quid. Yeah, I can understand you can't that. Buy it. I, can't, I can't believe it. 18 quid. But I'm living off this because I'm not allowed to take I'm not allowed to take um, ibuprofen. But that's got ibuprofen in it. If you if you use that, it, no, not, it's not. It's, it's not. It's not. It's got diflocaine. I've, I've been through this with the doctors. It's got. It's got something else. All oh, um, right. Diflocaine, which doesn't damage your stomach like ibuprofen does. All oh, right. Because I've... I'm on chemotherapy. Yeah. Um, the the chemotherapy reacts with chemicals in my stomach and causes me issues. Um, I have to take I have to take a metrazole, um, in massive doses each day, but uh, I can't take ibuprofen or. The other one that they give me for my uh, my uh, arthritis is the Proxen. Yeah. Which is great stuff because one in a Proxen tablet will keep my thumbs uh, working um, for the whole day. But I've got to use I've got to use this, which is a completely different formulation. It doesn't upset my stomach. Um, yeah, yeah. So the the arthritis is is coming to the fore because of the making of the model, and especially when I've got down to the last bits, like putting the headgear on. The headset, um, the throttle cables, and everything else—it's all tiny, fiddly little bits, and it really is hurting me doing it. Now, I spoke to the doctor about this a couple of weeks back, and he said that the best thing I can do is exactly what I'm doing. He said building something like these models, where you've got to use dexterity, is absolutely yeah. the best thing you can do with arthritis. He said what happens with arthritis is a lot of people succumb to the pain, and then their joints freeze up. Yeah, I've got it in my as knees. As long as you keep working, hey. Eh? I've got it in my knees. Yeah. Um, my knees you and said, my what? shoulders. And they you only said, found out I had it in my shoulders because I broke my collarbone and they took an x-ray and they said, do you realise you've got arthritic shoulders? And I said, no, I didn't. Uh, which I think is what the, this pain that I've had in my shoulders for the past week or two has been. I was just about to say, have you been to the doctor about that to see if it was... No, I have no. your arthritis? No, because we know, we know what happened with Jim, don't we? When he had a yeah. pain in his shoulder. Yes, so that was that was that was why I wanted to say about arthritis. That apparently by keeping the dexterity in my hands and fingers and doing this this modelling is actually the best thing that I can be doing, even though it's painful. But like I say, I live off of uh, I live off of um, Voltrol at the moment. It's uh, it's the best stuff for keeping the pain at rest. Um, that's that's what I wanted to say about arthritis, and it's. Like I say, somebody once said, you never get old alone. And I never quite understood that when I was a youngster. But as I'm old, I know exactly what they mean. You really don't get old alone, do you, Mickey? No, you don't, no. You get old, older, you yep, aches and pains, mate. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Oh, and it, once you hit yeah. 60, fuck me. It, 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 it's, it's all downhill, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know. Sometimes it points <laughs> up hill, but not as often as it used to. But, uh, but yeah, I do, I do know what you mean. Yeah, it is. It's, I was it's, absolutely it's... crippled today with the arthritis because I, because not only do I have arthritis, I've got joint hypermobility um, disorder. So that basically the joints hyperextend out of where they should be. So on top of the arthritis, my joints are wanting to go like out of out of, out of their normal range. Um, and all the walking around, it just the walking around, but even the you know, like holding on to the bus rail if you get on, or holding on to it, you know, as you go, yeah, uh, or put you know, when you go to stand you're up, you're a bus wanker. Yourself. What you're a bus wanker, I'm a bus wanker. Oh, yeah, yes, I have to be. Um, okay, uh, and even just pushing yourself off uh, out of a chair, so doing that more than usual, I was last night when i woke up this morning i really didn't think i was going to be able to get to the toilet because all the legs were just so painful and so seized up but obviously once you take those first few steps everything starts moving and then i had my hot bath and everything sort of unseized itself but yeah it's it's just it's all very well keeping moving and like steve was saying that it does hurt to have to do the little fiddly bits but the alternative is, yeah. is having the pain and seizing up. Lime bikes. Now, you don't know about lime yeah. bikes, do you, Mickey? Well, yeah, they, aren't they the green ones that you can rent anywhere with your little, um, with your, tap yep. it with your um, debit card and you can take them and uh, drop them the off? That's the problem. People are just dropping them off anywhere. In the middle of the street, in the middle of the road, anywhere where it's inconvenient. 
and Wandsworth, the London Borough of Wandsworth. Now, Bromley doesn't license any, the Bromley, the borough I live in, doesn't license any of these bike things. So you don't get any bikes for hire down here. What you get is you get the line bikes that are hired in Central being dumped down here. Because the piss edge Well, right? don't they... Sorry, I'm, let me get my head around this a minute. So when you swipe them out, say, with your debit yep. card, you don't have to swipe no. them back in when you finish. You haven't got no, time with it. Just... Yeah, I, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Oh, I, right. think, I think you just tell the app that you've stopped using it. Yeah. Oh right, I I, I, I don't, don't know. know. I've never hired one. So I mean, anyway, it might be a, it might be a bit like I again, it's London centric. But you know, if you touch in and then touch out on trains and yeah. buses and things, yeah, it might be a bit like that. As in, you touch in when you start, you touch it, you you touch it in, and then you're allowed to pedal, and then you touch it out when you yeah. finish pedaling, and then the app does the workings out for you for how long you be. Oh right, something like that. Because I, I thought they. I mean, it's my ignorance Fandom. again. I thought that they were they were in a stand thing, and you had to swipe that, the stand. Yeah, and stand, stand, stand them out. Them out. But surely you must have to put them back into a stand to end no, your, your no, ride. No, you, just, you, just, you just leave them somewhere. I'm not sure how it works. But anyway, oh, right. down here right. we're finding them. We're, down here, you, you go out somewhere and you see line bikes dumped everywhere. Because obviously, what's happening is. People are hiring them in Central because they can't hire them in Bromley because there is no scheme in Bromley. So they're hiring them in Central and using them to get home and then just dumping them. And basically, yeah. Wandsworth, the London yeah. Borough of Wandsworth, got so fed up with it, they've gone round and they're now starting to, uh, to starting to impound the line bikes. If line want them back, they've got to pay the impound fee of 120 quid plus storage charges. <laughs> I like so it. line have now turned around and said, OK, now we're going to find people that are man if they don't put their bikes away properly because you're supposed to put your bike in a proper receptacle like you just said, Mickey. Yeah, well, or that's what a specific have bike. Yep, yep, I've got it here, right? And the picture is of Wandsworth Central. Yep. And oh, register for free. All right, well, we'll go to a different one then because we're not. Gonna, I'm not registering any bloody things to. Uh, Wandsworth Guardian. There we go. Wandsworth Council to same line bike. Wanted leader said people in wheelchairs and prams have been forced to move to the road, oh, hang on. seized by officers until it does more to stop them blocking pavements, including penalties. There's currently no agreement between Lyme and the council for the e-bikes to be parked in Wandsworth, but people are riding them into the borough and dumping them as they don't need docking stations. Um, uh, then it gave me an address Some the pavements are in well, the easiest way to do that would to make them that they'd have to be put in a docking station to um, end your ride, if you like. Oh, here we go. Uh, wait a minute. To manage bike, these include GPS based, no parking zone. Oh, no, they, they ignore that. That's what they were thinking about doing. Um, so it'd be no parking zones. And they, they oh, we're focused, um, improve use of parking in the borough ahead of the launch of dedicated parking spaces for shared e bikes which we will provide a long term solution to these issues, as in, for example, where there are Santander bikes, the Boris bikes or whatever, they'll probably start allowing other e-bikes to use those docking stations, for example. Because yeah. I mean, th I think the idea is good that you've got bikes that you can just pick up from anywhere. The idea is good, the... but you've got the public involved. Exactly, exactly. And when you involve the public, just... it just doesn't make sense. So they're riding them from central london down here which is a good 12 miles which is doable yeah um and they're just dumping them down here and then of course line come around once every week and pick them all up and bring them back to london again but when people dump them they just seem to dump them in the middle of the pavement and i, I have seen it i've seen pavement blocked by these line bikes where people have just dump them and walked off it, it it's it's an app it, they they run by they they don't I don't know how you hire them but they're run by app so obviously the app will use some kind of GPS to show calculate how much you have to pay as in how far you've gone that's how I should imagine or how far you've gone how long you've gone for you know what I mean and they're capped at uh, oh sorry no the electric scooters are capped at twelve miles an hour because yeah. you can hire them as well so so I think it's a good thing that Wandsworth have done it and I wish the other councils would start doing it. And yeah, you yeah. need to find these yeah. people. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. You need to find these people who are just dumping yeah. the bikes.
<laughs> yeah, surely they must have a number registered to them, so they must know which, who's hired them. So, I, I, um, I don't. I, surely yes, they I can... agree. I agree. And why they're not? So they should be able to track whoever hired them, because if you've got to use your card to get them out, they must know which bike yeah. you've got, i.e., yeah. by a serial number or something else like that. If they pick this serial number up dumped in the bloody street, then surely well, yeah. they can then trace it back to your car. Yeah, it, it will be. And, and they'll they'll they... have serial. Sorry, Mickey. They'll have serial numbers, but also if they run yeah. by GPS as well, that that when, when an app, app, the app gets activated and deactivated and all that kind of stuff, they'll they'll know by GPS where the serial number of the bike is. So yeah. and they'll know who's and they'll hired know it. who's hired it because of the app. So they'll know who's dumped yeah. it. So they then then go back to yeah, that why they don't, card I don't and take. I don't know. As far as I can tell, you can't just pick one up and ride it. No. Uh, maybe the, maybe. No, tell that. No. Tell that to the. Tell that to the scumbag youth around here who managed to do it. I don't know how they get on them, but it's probably an app user who who hasn't. Uh, I don't know. Well, say we don't have them around here. Well, yeah, credit cards. Huh? I mean, well, yeah. what what they what they do around here is we don't have like line bikes. It's any fucking bike. You see a bike, you jump on it and fuck off with yeah. it. They're always on the bloody low stuff Facebook page. Somebody's nicked me bike, even if it's locked. So you don't need line bikes, do you? you? Just fucking pick any bike up you like in the street and ride off with it and dump it. That's what happens around here. Mind you, it's his lower stuff, isn't it? <laughs> right, moving yeah, swiftly yeah. on. Foy Gras. Foy Gras. Patty de Foy Gras. Yeah. He's off the menu at Buckingham Palace and he's permanently off Fine the enough. menu, according to Prince Fine Charles. Enough. Thank you, Prince Charles. Thank you very much. What is Foy Gras when it's up and fucking dressed? You're the Wiki Mickey. Huh? It's. It's. Patty. um. Pate. I think it's duck liver pate, pate, isn't it? It's either duck or goose. Yeah. It's something. All like... oh, right. And they. they... Well, I like a bit of Brussels they, patty. They, so. well, yes, but they these have been for. Seventy p. These are stuff. kept in these like cages, force fed, a very rich diet, so the liver gets really really fatty, and they're not allowed to run around so that they can't exercise it off. All oh, right. And then yeah. they get killed, and the fatty liver harvested, and it is a very expensive delicacy and extremely cruel. It's so actually quite nice. Pardon? It's actually quite nice. Quite nice or not, it's one of the cruelest things. Oh, no, so. I know, I agree it's cruel. I agree it's cruel, but it's, yeah. it's nice. I can't deny yeah, it. I've actually lovely. had it and it's nice. But uh, Pate's lovely. Yeah, Pate de Bois Gras. It's actually nice. But, yeah, but... <laughs> um, it's like, I'll tell you what, you remember Shipman, Shipman's meat paste, Mickey? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like that. Yeah. All right, but, yeah. But, uh, but, 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 it's like it's like animal pounds beef, pounds. it's duck liver. <coughs> I like the salmon or the crab myself. I like the ham mm. and the beef. Salmon's nice, so I must admit, salmon's nice. We do. I still get some now. Or when I was at work, I used to stick in me buttons. Well, I, I used to get them. Not uh, many shops do them now, but. Princes. Princes, they do it now. I haven't seen shipments about for ages, but princes do They still do, so. do them, to be fair, but they not you know you, you have to find them by the princes and the own brands and yeah, then they'll yeah. be like the the more expensive of the other brands and and smaller pot but they i have seen them you know what i like doing with them i like putting some toast in the toaster now you don't put toast in the toast you put bread in the toaster and it comes out as toast Good point. right um tip of the night. sorry culinary tip of the night yep and I, let, I, I toast the bread, and then I'll take it out of the toaster, and I'll let it go cold. And then when it's cold, I get yeah. some ham or beef or salmon chitlins, and I spread it on it. And it's really nice. Yeah. I like it on cream crackers. Yeah, it's nice on cream crackers. Like a bit of patty. I can you know. see that at Christmas I'm going to have to stock up on some paste, because Andy may well be watching, and he does like a bit of paste. So it's going to be up on the but, oh, You stick them on Ritz, Ritz crackers, cream crackers. Mm. King Charles, Just a little King knife Charles and... has decided that the royal households no longer have pâté de foie gras Good. on the menu. Good. 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 And do you know what? I'm so glad that it is coming to pass that his um, environmental and 
animal rights and all that kind of thing is is actually happening because when he first became king and people were do you think he will do that do you think he'll carry on with environment stuff he wanted to go to the um uh what's happening now the 27 that that's it yep he wanted to go to that but liz trust told him he wasn't allowed to um but i think it's important that he does get involved with these things because this isn't politics i know politicians debate them but this isn't politics these are people's and animals and the world's lives yeah. I think it's important, I, and I'm great. I'm really pleased. It should have been done years ago, but obviously Queenie was old school, and it didn't happen. So good. The, the reason I had Lakeside on there is because I, 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 that's the only thing I don't like about Discord, right? Is if you, if you've already posted something, and then you want, to, and then you, somebody else has said something, and you want to answer but not hit in the reply, it puts it on a new line. And I was actually that was actually meant for Mickey, as in. Lakeside, it's a bit of a stretch, isn't it? Not wanting to talk about Mickey. I just realised that Lakeside was a hell of a stretch from his ass. Got to be a good, got to be a good hundred miles, Tracy. Got to be, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. But yeah. is it the biggest kind of shops in a box near you? What? Is it the? I call it shops in a box when it's a big metal box with all shops in it. Yeah. Is it, is it like that? Manchester will be the next. Manchester, what, I think, will be the next nearest one. Or even mention <coughs> Yeah. Well, it, it's uh, probably four, four and a half oh, hours. Okay. No, 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 like there'll be a Westfield. Is there a Westfield <coughs> in Essex? Because <coughs> the West, the Westfield in Shepherd's Bush, that is shops in a box. It's a big metal box with loads of shops in it. Yeah, yeah well, um, lake size like that. You never did the Thurrock lake side. Oh. I honestly, I'm not. I'm not a shopping person. I hate You've it. You've never been out of Shops Thurrock. You've never been out of Lakeside. It's Europe's largest no, shop shopping centre. Uh, well, yeah. I'm not going there then because Shops in a Box is just. It's not just Shops in a Box. It is a massive. It is uh, massive. It's massive. You've got the centre, and then you've got loads of um, a retail park uh, all around it. Retail parks all around it. Yeah, yeah. It it just sounds yeah. hideous to me. It is. It is. It is Europe's. It's Europe's <laughs> largest shopping centre. So, um, closely followed by Blue Water, which is just around the corner. All oh, right, so there was uh, so so it's Lakeside and Blue Water, and then also there is a Westfield. Yeah, Westfield, is... Westfield are like compared to Lakeside, Westfield is a corner shop. Oh, see, I went to Westfield in Shepherd's Bush once, hated it. Well, you hate like Lakeside. That. Lakeside is massive, um, like absolutely massive, Tracy, um, with all the retail parks. My side is there, really the, playing up. Oh. In um uh, I, there's a place Merton near Wimbledon called Merton Abbey Mills, which is quite a historical place. And there, obviously, there used to be Merton Abbey and everything. And there used to be all these kind of craft shops and individual shops. And there'd be a market and little stalls. And it was really, really lovely. Back about 30 years ago, really lovely place to go to. There's a, a pub on a river with a big old water mill and that. And in the last 30 years, Merton Abbey um, area has shrunk, 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 shrunk. So you've still got this little enclave of crafty type new age things going on. But the rest of it is a massive retail park. And it's just absolutely soulless now. Um, I pff, go, go past I've got to go. I'm, just, I'm, I'm in a bit of pain here, so I need some water to take That's some right. pain. I've run out of water to get yeah, painkillers. Yeah. Oh. Um, they built, um, it was Sainsbury's then, Say, Sainsbury's Saver Centre, because I used to live there. Um, and um, there was Sainsbury's Saver Centre. It's now not, I don't, it's now not Saver Centre, just Sainsbury's. It's just a big Sainsbury's now. But they built that there first on the Wandle River. Lovely. And it had Merton Abbey Mills. That's fine. So big supermarket, bit of a crafty, nice bit there. But you go there now and it is just a retail park where you've got a big old warehouse of Argos and Pets at Home and TK Maxx. And they're all massive, great big hangers of these things. And it's just completely ripped the soul out of the place. And I absolutely hate it. I know we need progress, but there's progress and there's progress. So anyway, carry on, Mickey. You were saying about Lakeside. No, I was just saying that's where my wife and daughter went today. It was all. Uh... Was it Christmas present shopping? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> there's nothing really like that around here, you know, so... Um, you um, were pleased not to be going? Oh, I won't go with them two. <laughs> not shopping. Yeah. Fuck's sake, I ain't going with Donna, let alone fucking... Did, did, they, the did they invite you and then go, but he won't want to come? <laughs> no, 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 I didn't even get an invite because I knew damn well I wouldn't mm. go, so, no. Good. Um, Good. No, it, it... I'm trying to find somewhere here. Yeah. Because we were talking about the environment and, well, sort of, King Joel. Yeah. David Attenborough today, I think it was today. Oh, yeah. Was accosted in a while he's trying to have some eating by a, a woman from Animal, whatever it is. Why are they accosting him? Uh, oh, I don't he's know because he's a fucking. Oh, that's why I'm trying to find the article. I can't find. Yeah. Yeah. He's a naturist. Well, no, it wasn't because. Oh, no, it's a naturist that takes the clothes <laughs> off, isn't it? He, he's totally, <laughs> totally not against nature. Exactly that. <laughs> no, no. I. I He's a conservationist. Can't find it at the moment. If you if you think about the environment and the world, one of the first people that comes to mind is David Attenborough. What's happened to all the people? What's happened to all the people yes. asking us anything? Yeah, exactly that. Have we got? Yeah, well, uh, who's in our chat? Who's in our chat? It is now around about the time that we normally start. Yeah. So who is here? We, this is literally, this is pub talk. We're in the pub, we're having a chat, or we're in the bar, having a chat, Saturday evening for us. Come, just Here we come are. and have a chat. We were actually in the pub. Yep, look, come I'm drinking chat. Pepsi Max, I'm hardcore. That, exactly. You can't, not, not. Eco-protester eco arrested as she tries to confront Sir David Attenborough. Did she want to? A climate change activist has been arrested as she tried to confront celebrated animal documentary maker and climate activist Sir David Attenborough. Emma Smart, an animal rebellion activist, tried to con confront Attenborough at the old fish market in Weymouth, Dorset. Ah! And, and she was dragged, she was eventually dragged outside after refusing to leave. You, there's a photo of her being dragged out by two female cops. What did she want to confront him about? Stop making she programs? Said, well, apparently she said, we don't need another documentary series showing us that we are losing some 150 species going extinct globally every single day. Okay. What we need is action. That's... <laughs> <laughs> well, what the fucking hell do you think he's doing? Exactly. You know? I mean, I mean... But there's photos of her being dragged out by two female we, cops. We know that, we, that, that action is needed. He it's, is like these, it's like these just stop oil protesters, right? Did you read? The police are now intercepting them in their cars. Think about that for a Yeah, minute. exactly that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the same. I was watching some yesterday come up on my timeline from one of my American friends. Um, the Senate, there were there was somebody wanted to shut down this chemical plant in um, Louisiana. Um, and he asked her, well, he said that 90% of the stuff you've got on has got petrochemicals in it, from your clothes to your shoes to the vehicle you got here. And that. And he said, you want to stop all that? And she couldn't get him. She, she wouldn't answer him. She just kept going on about fucking God. This, this supposed being that's up in the fucking sky watching us, who made, as we discussed the other night, Adam and Eve and, and fucking that fairy that you were on about. What's, his, what's her name? Trace. Oh, what? Who? What? Uh, fairy. Fairy? Adam and Eve, the first bloke. Oh, yeah, that yeah Adam... no, he, he, Adam's first wife was called Lilith. That's it, Lilith, yeah. the witch. I always, Lilith, when I hear Lilith, I always think of a witch. Because, I don't know well, why. No, because, be, that's because of the, uh, like, the indoctrination of the, the fact that Lilith is, uh, was a naughty person. Not, she yeah. wasn't, she wasn't, but because... She, because she wanted to be more dominant than Adam, in other words, having sex with her on top, stuff like that, she got banished. Her and her children with Adam got banished. That is, you know, conveniently left out of a lot of the Bible. So when Adam's yeah. children with Eve bugger off into the wilderness and meet people, they're actually Adam's children <laughs> that they meet and marry and have children with. 
I was, I was more interested in Mickey's in Mickey's uh, in Mickey's version of religion. But I think Mickey's a cult, and then I just realised I mispronounced cult. You spelled it right or wrong? Yeah, 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 I mispronounced it. But yeah, I like I like Mickey's this yeah. guy being up there somewhere. Now, yeah, I, that was a good the, rant, the, and you oh, interrupted him, Tracy. No, that was a good rant, and you interrupted him. Oh no, I didn't. Yeah, you did. You did. Come on, Mickey. Come no, on from the sky being up there. He asked. Me, uh, he asked me well, so it's, 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 it's apparent fucking thing that's supposed to be up there looking down on us and judging us and everything that we do. Oh my god, I'll bring you up here if you're good, or I'll send you down there. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going down there, it's fucking warmer. I don't want to be up there, thank you very much. Huh? Oh, is that uh, it? Huh? Oh. Yeah, yeah, well, fucking hell, yeah. what, what do you want me to say? Oh, you have a yeah, it's. No, it's it's just a figment of some fucking people's imaginations. It it was a book written by loads of people that was then translated, not only translated, but it was edited so that half the stuff that was there in the first place isn't fucking there. And you've got people all over America who fucking live by these freaking words. Ah, fucking diabolic. Yay! <laughs> it was a, it was a book of short stories written by lots of yes. different people. Yes, that's you've a got bit the, like fucking Ansel and Gretel and that's everything why you've else. you've got the book of Job, the book of Exodus, the book of Mark, the, the, all, loads and loads of different people. And conveniently, all the women's ones, apart from one woman, all the women's stories have been left out. That's because it's a patriarchal um, religion. Well, I reckon Jesus was shagging Mary Magdalene myself. Well, that's but... what they reckon. They reckon that she, they, they, they were married and she wasn't actually a prostitute. It was just... The modern Bible's interpretation of it made her yeah. again to be the Jezebel, to be uh, Jezebel. Yeah, but they, but but it is reckoned. But that people she still had use the word Jezebel. Obviously, you did. Yeah. Well, no, no. Because it's in the Bible. I've so got to use it. Um, the um, it's the law, Mary, isn't Mary it? Magdalene had her own book, but like a sacred scroll, which didn't go yeah. into the Bible because she was. She was the wife of Jesus. That this is what the thing, the the thoughts are. She actually married Jesus and had children with him. But we're not allowed to know about that because that would be taking away that dirty prostitute view of yes. her. That would spoil the story. Exactly, spoil the story by actually having the truth in it. So yeah, it's a bit like the sun these days, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you spoil a story by putting the fucking truth yeah. in. Well, I couldn't tell the fucking truth. It's fucking staring them in the face. I, I would I would absolutely That's the sun. Yeah. yeah. No, I would absolutely love to um read the actual what is written in the scrolls. Not I mean I not obviously I can't read ancient Hebrew. Black Sea Scrolls. Was it Black Sea Scrolls? Yeah, something like that. Um th th I mean there's I'd love to read what actually was written. Um, I can't read ancient Hebrew, but obviously, like the translation of it, and not somebody's interpretation of it, just as it should have been. I'd love to, yeah. but, but not the, just the Bible, it, all the scrolls, all of them, and make my own bloody mm -hmm. mind up. You know, if I read yeah. in the scrolls that these, the, these, you know, if if anything that I read in the scrolls actually turned my head to go, yeah, okay, there may well be an actual God person. Then great, but I can't read the current Bible, the King James Bible. I think he was an alien come from another planet. Yeah. That's your husband. <laughs> I'm married to Jesus. Yeah. Oh. Hey. No, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Alien come from another planet, a spaceship. Yeah. That's what, You've got to remember, Tracy, you've got to see the original scrolls they've written on. You can't. The Bible was actually written in about the eighth century, you know, eight hundred years after Jesus was dead. After. That's yeah. when the Bible was written. It was written by yeah. monks and clerics, not the ordinary people. Because ordinary people couldn't read or write. It was written by monks, clerics, and royalty about eight hundred years after he died. And it wasn't written from scrolls. It wasn't written from any original things. It was written from no, stories. No, no, I'm just saying. I'm... Yeah, but I I would love to. I'd love to read the Bible or, or how, like I keep saying, I, obviously I can't read ancient Hebrew or whatever it was written in, but I'd like to, I'd love to. You're doing a good chance. Good, good, good. What? 
Yeah. So you're making a good fist of talking, <laughs> it ancient Hebrew. Blah, 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 blah. I'd, love, I'd huh? love to read. Uh, I'd love to read the original version of the Bible, whether <coughs> that was written at the time or written 800 years later by or whatever it was uh, by um, monks. I'd like to read what was originally supposed to be in it rather than the let's control the population version of King James. Yeah. I, I just yeah. just out of knowledge, knowledge, curiosity, curiosity. And again, like I said, if it did turn my head and go, actually, yeah, there is something in this. Maybe there is a God. Fine, well, but I don't think it's a bit like Chinese whispers, yeah. really. Yeah. Not only that, you've got the, the biggest, it the is, biggest obstacle you've got, Chris, is religion itself isn't religion, religion is a massive multi billion pound business, and they don't yes. want you to know yeah. what really went no. out because it would spoil their big business. Mickey, you were going to yeah. say oh, they've got whole, whole TV channels of it over in the States. Dedicated to making money out of this, you know. Oh, well, what's, what's, what's all this? What's all this shit? I, I remember watching during uh, during the Queen's funeral, right? Um, in Westminster Abbey, right? They had men with <coughs> pointy hats and had men with sabers and things like that. Well, what the fuck's that all about? Does that mean I'm more religious than you are if I've got a pointy hat? Yeah. I mean, how can, how can You're you more have, pious in mate. religion, right? How can you have a hierarchy like you do in the army? Oh, the Archbishop is the man in charge. The bishops are below the, the Archbishop. What does that mean? The man in charge is closer to God or he's more religious or he's more pious? What the fuck does that actually mean when you're in charge? It, it means, means you're the it. CEO. It's just a load of... Yeah, exactly. You've yeah. Got all, you you're you look ways. at the dripping of gold and you look at all the fucking going on around there and you realise religion isn't about religion. It's about money. Yeah. That's all it's about yeah. is money. And so, with that, they don't want you to know what you want to know, Tracy. Because if you do, no, no, that, that, no. that changes their belief system. Exactly, exactly. That takes away the yeah. power, exactly. doesn't it? Exactly, it takes away the power. And, and um, uh, like I've always said before as well, is that it's a, a patriarchal... Um, I'm glad we've got uh, no viewers, because we've just pissed off half the world. <laughs> oh, good. It's, I'm glad about it's, that. It's a patriarchal... Well, I mean, um, not being funny, Steve, if they had... Um, if we had got loads of viewers, then they'd have their chance to have some say exactly. something in the in the comments, yeah. there. and then we could have a proper discussion yeah. about it. But that's it. fine. This will go up as content, and people can watch it as much as they like. So, yeah. um, but it, it's also a patriarchal um, uh, hierarchy thingy. Whereas, where yeah. women, and also when you read in the original Bible, they want to keep down the gays and the disabled. So, you know, you got to read the you got to read your. I've read my Bible. Um, and, um, you know, about who's welcome at whose temple and things like this. Uh, but they want to suppress any anything that isn't, a, you know, like a full-blooded man who, um, you know, is going to be the leader of o over everybody else. And that's why they kept out of the current Bible, all except for one woman. And that's what pisses me off is that it's not balanced. And they, they argue now about whether women should be pri or women should or could be priests. Of course they bloody well should. It, it's an, it's, this is an equal society and the Bible as it stands does not reflect society as it should be. M men and women, 50-50. Hmm. Some are more equal than exactly. others. That's communism. No, I'm not talking about the sex. That's either. communism, Mickey, about... where some are more I mean... equal than others. Yes. Exactly that. Yeah. I'm not religious. When people ask me what my religion is, I say I'm a quizzical agnostic. And they look at me and say, what the fuck yeah. is that? Well, I'll try and explain it. You know the Ku Klux Klan, right? They would plant crosses on people's front gardens and set fire at them. Well, a quizzical agnostic does exactly the same, but with question marks. <laughs> yeah. Tracy's obviously watching porn up, if you look. No, um, yeah. I had a notification about something and I've clicked on it and it looks like it's, um, yeah, don't worry, it looked, it looked interesting. It wasn't Pornhub at all. Oh, it's a, tell us about it. It's interesting. Go on, tell us about it. It's, well, no, uh, you know when you follow your, your school, um, your old school from... Um, no, uh, no. No, right. No. You're not following I your old school. I walked out of that school and I've not given it a thought since no. of you, Mickey. Not, not no. your primary school. 
Huh? No. Okay. I walked out of school at 15. I left school at 17 I, and I've never, looked, I've never been to a... I've been invited to so many fucking reunions. I don't want to... I don't want to... I couldn't fucking stand them when I was... when I was sitting next to them at school. At school. I don't want to see them 50 well, my, years later. Yeah. My, my sister should have been in the pictures and she's not, so I One don't know One of them is John Pino, the, the, um, uh, the uh, BBC's political correspondent. I wanted to no. slap him when I was at I, school um, and nothing's changed uh, since. Go on, Mickey. I walked out of school 15 and left my hometown at 16. So no, so... no, we don't trace you, but you carry on. You're not interested in Lost your um, your primary school or your secondary school? No. No. No, okay. Well, that's... No um, interest. No. It was my primary school that um, that something came through, so I just wanted to see. I mean, let's, think, let's face it, my primary school teachers will be, all be fucking dead yeah. by now. Most of mine are, yeah. I think mine were when they were teaching me. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm from the neck up, yeah, yeah. Most of mine were, my most of mine were, and um, what came through was um, a pic. You know, there was a picture of one of the old people, <coughs> So it's just a bit of nostalgia. I don't. I'm not actually in contact with any of the people from my primary school at all. It's just sometimes pictures get put on there, and there's pictures like that I'm in from like school plays and things. So that's. I like seeing those popping up because my mum and dad were not photo takers at all. So it's uh, for any of us. So it wasn't just me. They didn't. They didn't just go. Oh God, the ugly child. We won't <laughs> photograph her. None of us. Um, basically, if I hadn't taken photos after my brother was born, there'd be no photos of my brother before the age of fifteen. So, um, but yeah. So it's just nostalgia and seeing if pictures, old pictures of me pop up. That's all. And that one should have been one with my sister in it, and it wasn't, so... No, no I'm with Vicky. I've got, I've got no... Um, I've got one friend on my Facebook... Well, I had on my old Facebook one friend from school, and that was it. And he got in contact with me about five years ago and said, do you remember me? And I said, yeah. And uh, he said, do you want to come out for a drink sometime? You know, go over a day. I said, no, not really. I hated you then. I don't think anything's changed then, since then. So... <laughs> you know, you're talking about Gordon Ramsay earlier and his restaurants. Yeah. Activists promoting a vegan diet, diet to protect the environment have occupied celebrity chef Gordon Ramsay's restaurant in Chelsea, West London. Oh. Which one? What's it called? <laughs> it's called. I don't know. It just says it's in. Uh, restaurant. Everywhere. Restaurant Gordon Ramsay on Hospital Road, Chelsea. Oh my God, he's got restaurants everywhere. Can I? I mean, obviously he's cooking in them. Can I tell you something that I read once many years ago? Um, I'm going to paraphrase it, so I may not get it exactly right. But if vegans had their own way, right? If vegans had their own way, planet Earth, the population of planet Earth, will be dead within a generation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you mm -hmm. mentioned it before. Yep. But but I yep. can't remember why. Right. Well, first of all, we kill twenty six million animals each day for food. Mm. Vegans would want us to stop doing that. So what happens to those twenty six million animals? They will. They eat the grass. The vegans want to eat. The, the twenty six million animals still have to be fed, watered, looked after. And they're not dying, so that's 26 million animals extra every day. That's 26 million animals that have got to be fed and they've got to be watered. And, and they're, they're breeding, breeding and they're taking that That's food that they're taking away from the vegans. They're eating food that we could be eating. So what's the answer? You know, all the 26 million animals? Okay, what do you do with them if you're not eating them? Bury them, yeah. burn them, adding to the pollution. Next thing is, exactly with that, right. next thing is, right, so you've got this 26, so you can't kill these 26 million animals. They're shitting, they're pissing, they're polluting the water courses, they're eating food that we would eat, they're harboring diseases and everything else. And that's not just 26, that's not just 26 million animals, that's 26 million animals each day. So in 10 days, that's 260 million animals we haven't killed. And those 260 million animals, they're taking our energy, they're taking our food, 
and they're leaving us disease they're leaving us uh, unhealthiness and that is what will kill the planet within a generation if vegans have their way so being a vegan is actually quite self-defeating makes it absolute makes sense, sense. It does. Yeah. but vegans, and vegans I just don't think that far ahead all right they think I that just remembered, i just remembered that you said you told us that you had that same not rant but um you know putting your point across thingy uh to andrea yeah. it was it was andrea that you you said hang on let's let's work this one out then yeah it, she defended me if... <laughs> but you couldn't argue with it yeah you can't argue with it what do you do with those 26 million animals that you don't kill yeah. you can't forget them no don't but you also then can't befriend them and have them as pets no so it's not like you can go oh, so, look, so the maiden's answer is to forget about them andrew's answer wants to forget about them or, or kill them anyway and do what with them you might as well make yeah. you kill them you might as well fucking eat them wouldn't you yeah and make exactly. leather for your shoes and your exactly. jackets so and, yeah being a vegan is very much self-defeating if they had their own way, the whole planet would be dead within a generation. So that's why I'm never going to be a vegan or a vegetarian. I like meat. Fuck me, I love meat. I have tried that meat substitute, corn. That's like eating sawdust. Oh. Right. Corn is disgusting. But tell me this. Tell me this. Why do non-meat eaters want things that taste like chicken or beef or... Huh? Or bacon? Why do they want these tastes? Know, do they? Without having the actual product. I don't know. I don't know. I've tried. I mean, I've tried Linda McCarty sausages. Actually, taste like they've been made out of Linda McCarty. They're disgusting. They're <laughs> cardboard. They are. They are diabolical. Right? Soy protein yeah. and mushroom protein is diabolical. However, McDonald's do a McPlant burger, which actually tastes quite nice. <coughs> I suspect that's because of the McDonald's sauce they put on it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. No, cor corn is a Franken. I call it a Franken food because it has been grown in vats. And by the way, corn is not vegan because it's been made out of egg protein. So it's oh, egg it? protein well, and mushroom pro protein. I think it's. I think it might be egg white. A mushroom protein is gone whizzy, whizzy, whiz somewhere, and then they grow them in big steel chemical vats, and they so so they basically just let it grow, like let it, and then they harvest it and turn it into food. It's that's so disgusting. Please, please don't feed me something that has been grown in a lab. No. My um, my nephew's girlfriend is a pescatarian. Fish. Yeah, she'll eat fish, but she won't eat meat. Well, I can't. It's still flesh, isn't it? Yeah, but I think, so what's the fucking difference? I think some people have the problem with it being like, rather, fish aren't as sentient as sheep, shall we say. They still have feelings. Yeah, I, I, you can see when they're trying. You stick a hook in its mouth and it fucking feels and, it. And if you put it, if you, if you huh? land it on a boat and it just flaps around dying because it's, yeah. Gasping for air. You can see that it's gasping for air and it's dying and everything. So yeah. Well, it's gasping for water in its case, but yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. 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 Sorry, but there's oxygen in the water. I know what I meant, but yeah. 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 Um, it, it's yeah. um. So it's gasping and it's dying, and th yeah. they don't get knocked out nice and cleanly like they would for a sheep or a fit or a or a fish. I was going to say. Or a cow, and yes, I know the argument is well, you don't know, you haven't seen what's got, got goes on, goes on in the abattoirs. They don't all get stunned, and it's killing them anyway. And so, you know, like the argument when we're talking about halal meat, and they basically yeah. the animals are preyed to and then slit rather than have the stun. And it's oh well, they're killing them anyway. What's the difference? Well, if someone was going to slit my throat, I'd really quite like to be unconscious first. But I mean. When I went fishing, you'd haul up the nets when I was trawling off. You'd haul up the nets and you'd sort them and you'd throw them into the ice, still flapping. Yeah, yeah. you don't knock them out still nice alive, and cleanly, so do you? No, I mean, and then, well, you, you'd, you'd sometimes you'd gut them first, but, you know, but still alive when you gut them. That's what I'm saying. It's not, it's not like you've, you've hauled them in and you go, oh, they're quick. 
quick, nice, nice little tap on the side of the head, and they're out cold or anything no, like no, that. No, 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 no. First thing you do is slit the belly open, mm. pull all their innards out. Lovely. So how? No, so how can that be any? So uh, that's why I can't understand how you can eat fish but not meat. Yeah. I know they, as you say, they're probably not as sentient as a. As a, as a land animal, but they're still sentient creatures. Yeah, yeah, I, but I think that's how people do um, balance it out. Like, as in, they're not eating the ones that are walking around who have got feelings and come up to you and talk to you. And <coughs> you can tap them on the head, yeah. even though a cow, a cow's instinct is to kill you, basically. Um, but it, you know, it, it's not like the cows that killed somebody in 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 a town in Britain the other day. Yeah, were they protecting their young? Because that that's when they will stampede. Oh, well, apparently they broke out and went into a town and and, oh. and killed an old old man. Oh, so they actually broke out and went a killer cows on the loose. <laughs> Fucking hell! I did. I, I, it must be true. I read it on. Facebook. Oh well, if you read it on Facebook. If you read it on it's Facebook, true. And backed it up by Wiki Mickey. It's got. To yeah, be true. got to be true. <laughs> got to be true. Yes, yes. The Waitrose TV ads have been in the news this week. Um, because of the suntans, um, the anti-sun brigade have been going on about the men, the farmers. Uh, have you seen the Waitrose TV ads? No. Uh, Google, Google the Waitrose TV ads. It's basically farmers comparing suntans, you know, lifting up their arms and comparing suntans. Well, apparently oh, right. it's got the anti-skin cancer brigade all frothing at the mouth. Oh, phone crying out loud. I know. I know. You look outside all the time. You're going to get a suntan whether you slather on back to... 2022 well, is the year of being offended, right? Everybody's offended by everything. I mean, I'll tell you how bad it is, right? The other day I took the piss out of myself and a complete stranger got offended. <laughs> An elderly man has been taken to hospital with serious injuries after being attacked and trampled by a dangerously out of control cow. <laughs> In Wales, this is. Best pal! Don't tell best me. Pal. It's, it's one of the best pals, fucking cows. Wasn't, wasn't there a couple of years ago, back in Wales, wasn't there a couple of years ago, um, somebody got killed by stampeding water buffalo in Wales? <laughs> Probably. Best pal, keep your hands under control. Yeah, I knew water buffalo in Wales. No, best pal would. But somebody did kill, get killed by a Chicken, Mickey, Google it. Didn't somebody get killed by a water buffalo in Wales? Oh, dear, oh, dear. So yeah, they, the anti, the anti, the anti, Sun Brigade have been out moaning that uh, people uh, might take this ad seriously with comparing their suntan. So it's been quite, uh, it's it's caused quite a stir amongst people, and Waitrose have apologised for it, Tracy. Actually, as a father and teenage son died after a buffalo attack on their farm in Us. See? I didn't even know we had buffalo in this country. They were Eat. gored by a water buffalo at their family farm in Wales. Yep, there you go. Ralph Jump, 57, his son Peter, 19, suffered fatal injuries when they were attacked alongside their daughter, Isabel, 22, who survived the incident. I didn't <laughs> yeah. know we even had water buffalo here. Yeah, we have, no. yeah. He, got, he breeds them on this farm, apparently. Well, he did, before they fucking killed him. I, I remember. I remember when I was. I must have been about. I must have been about twenty-one or twenty-two, because I'd only just passed my car driving test, and I was going down to the Romney Heath and Dimchurch Railway because I love that railway. Um, as Tracy knows, I love that railway. My grandfather loved it. My father loved it, and I love it. And I so go. So that steam train you've done the other month. That little tiny train, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Mom. Tracy knows it. Tracy knows it well as well. Um. I've not actually been on it yet, but it's it is on my to do list. I didn't list. say you were not. Actually... I said you know it. Yeah, no, no. I'm just saying I, I know it. I've not been on it yet, but it is on my to do list. I want to take my grand grandsons on it. So I make sure I just, go just down at least that. once a year to go on it. So, so anyway. I'm driving down there, right? And to get to it, you've got to go through. Um, in them days, the M20 wasn't fully built. That's why I know I was very young. The M20 wasn't fully built, so you had to go through places like Rye in Sussex and. Paul McCartney Lovely. owns. Paul McCartney actually owns most of Rye. I don't know whether you know that, but he owns all of the farms and everything else around. He's a massive landowner, and so's the guy from the Rolling Stones. Anyway, I'm driving down this country lane, right? Uh, minding my own business, doing about 35 miles an hour. I turn the corner, and fuck me, 
standing in the middle of the road staring at me is this creature that I've never seen before in my life. I looked at him, but what the fuck is that? Right? I didn't have a dash cam. I didn't have a mobile phone. It's right three mobile phone days. I couldn't take a picture of it. And then it just charged off. And I carried on driving, and the wife was with me, and the kids were with me. The kids don't remember it. They were too young. And I started telling people about it when I got back home, and they all thought I was talking bollocks and making it up about this really strange creature. And a couple of years later, I discovered, because the internet wasn't about then when I was in my 20s, a couple of years later, I discovered it was a llama, right? Oh, oh right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a llama, right? Well, you don't know, do you? I mean, you imagine it, right? No point of reference. You're driving, all of a sudden, a fucking llama <coughs> appears in the middle of the road. This is like 1978, Mickey. Yeah. Right? Uh... You didn't, couldn't Google it then. The nearest thing to Google was to go into the public library and look through a book, the Encyclopedia Britannica. And for years, none of my mates believe me. I now know that there's actually llama and a pack of farms down and right. There's loads there of them down there. There is as well. Yeah, there's, there's loads right, of them there down is there. Right there. But it was just the, the most bizarre thing that I'd ever come across. I thought, why would you think there was a llama in the UK? It's like coming across it's a same. lemon, an elephant, or, 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 you know, a camel in England. You know, llamas just don't grow here. But they do, apparently. So that's what's well, you think that nowadays it makes sense, but back in the 70s, he's like, wait, wait, wait what? That looked like a cross between, like, a, a goat and a, and a giraffe and a, you know? Uh, um, back in the 70s, it, that was it, unusual. I didn't know what the fuck it was. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Back in the 70s, it was unusual. Nowadays, you can kind of understand. Yeah. People have llama farms, alpaca farms, and we sanctuaries have, um, and things like that. We have wallabies running about now and again. Yeah. Because just, just up the road at Kessingland, they've got a, a wildlife park. Oh, I've been at Kessingland, yeah. Kessingland Wildlife, yeah. I've been there. Yeah. Every now and again, the um, wallabies will escape, and uh, they'll catch them running down the A12 or whatever. That's all been bypassed now, Kessingland, doesn't it? Yeah, that's got a bypass, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that used to be, yeah, used to be a bottleneck, didn't it? Yeah, oh, it used to be terrible going down that high street. <coughs> it saves you about five minutes now, though. What about Saxmundon? Is that bypassed or is that still. Is the H12 still. Saxmundon's bypassed. Is it? Now, yeah, I love going joke, to yeah. Saxmundon because as you went into Saxmundon, on the left, coming up to Lowestoft, on the left, there was that big church that was always brightly lit at night. Yeah. Don't see that anymore. Blyborough Church. Church. Yeah, you don't see that anymore then. Yeah, you do, because it's a Blytheborough. Is what, sorry? It's at Blytheborough, that church. Oh, it's Blytheborough, yeah, Blytheborough, you're right, yeah. But I thought that's, um, that's, the... that's where they got, they reckon there's big um, scratch marks in the door from a dog they call Black Shuck round here. Okay. Apparently it's a ghostly dog. Um, but still supposed to haunt the place. So that's uh, not, been, not been bypassed then? Um, Blyborough hasn't, no, because I don't know if you remember it, but it's got two very sharp bends through it. Yep. You'll see the church over on the left, and as you yep. go around the bend, on the right it's a pub. Yep. yep. Hasn't, um, it got a big then, hasn't it got a big body of water there as well? That's it, yeah, yeah. just you come out, that's Blyborough that is, yeah. 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 And you go about a mile up and you all, right you turn all, off. Um, no, that's um, um, I can't remember that what it's called. It's the river of something or yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we know what we're talking about, don't we? Bure, yeah, Bure is Bure is in uh, Yarmouth. No, no, Bure B <coughs> know, B yeah, W L. Exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I think it's called Bure Water B W L, isn't it? I, think... I can't remember what it's called. I can't remember. Um, All right, okay. But when a tide's high, it floods the road. Water in Kent, if you might be thinking of that. For many years, Mickey, long before when I was with my first wife, so it was pre-1995, um, every year we used to go camping at uh, Great Yarmouth. Little little village outside of Great Yarmouth called Belton. I don't know if you know it. Belton, do you, Mickey? Yeah, I know Belton. Yeah, it's he's... the River Blythe, anyway. Sorry? That water is the River Blythe, B-L-Y-T-H. Oh, right, okay. 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 Um, but, yeah, I know, I, know, I know it very well. Oh, right, OK. I used to go to a farm. I forget the name of the farm there. But yeah, it was, it, was, it was a campsite with a swimming pool and everything. For every year, for about must be fifteen years, we went there camping. That was my that was my last week in July, first week in August. 
go camping up there, which is why I know that area so well, and the A12, because yeah. I drive it, you know, on the way up there and on the way down. And I've actually seen it over the years change from what was an absolute nightmare journey. I remember the first time I actually went up to Great Yarmouth, the, you didn't bypass Ipswich. You had to go right through the centre of Ipswich. Yeah. And a yeah. fucking nightmare that was, that journey. Yeah. yeah. And then gradually over the years, the bike they bypassed it and made it wider and wider and wider. Um, and it's, it's, there's, there was one point on the journey where I actually crossed a level crossing. Did you still cross that? That'd be at Saxmundham. That's maybe why I remember. No, 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 no. Yoxford. Is it? Yoxford, you still go on the little hill. Do you still do that? Yeah. Yeah, still go across it. All right. Well, that's where I met the rabbits. But yeah, it's not too bad because you're only about a train every hour and a half. Yeah. So. But well, that road, that bad. road is single file. Uh, 60 mile an hour. It is all the way from Ipswich, more yeah, or less. Yeah, that, probably... that's, that's the rabbit road, Mickey. I told you about the yeah. rabbits, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, the mixies. Yeah, that's the rabbit. They used to jump out in front of you back in the day. Well, this was at night, coming back at night one night. Yeah. They were already in that's the road. Time jump out and I couldn't you. fucking, I couldn't see them and I couldn't avoid them. And my missus chucked up in the car. You hear them popping. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. When you put him, what's that? I said, it's rabbits. It's, it's, just, it's not so bad now, but that that must have been back in the mixitosis days, mixmatosis days. Oh. Um, they used to leap out. You couldn't do anything about it. You couldn't do anything they about it. They used to sit the boat and jump out. Just there. No, I wasn't going. I wasn't going. Oh, I was going. Yeah. Yeah. Just like a. What? Why were they? Why were they popping? Was it As just? Like, over them. When you were over them. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just wondered whether there was something different you know, to make it's them like or it just packing. running over them. You know when you pop bubble wrap? Yeah. Oh, like really? Well, you do it because it's like you're squeezing it. You're squeezing their head with your tire. It all pops out. They're like, and they're all out know, their arse. Yeah. Not repeatedly. I actually hit a deer along there as well in my lorry. It took the fucking headlight out. Oh, God. The thing got up and ran off. It was only a monk mm -hmm. jack. Fucking thing. Diabolical. <laughs> that, that was about. That was in the middle of the night and all. Smash my fucking head like. <coughs> yeah. Oh, let me just have a look. All sorts oh, of wildlife. Uh, right. I Magic. just looked at the um at the list of, that Steve had put. Right, you put Chancellor's speech, and I wanted to actually say something about this. I saw that the Chancellor has put. Uh, now he's now the electric cars. Now you will have to, uh, you'll from 2023, you'll have to 25. pay uh, tw oh, 25. Sorry, I misread that. Uh, you'll have to pay vehicle excise duty on it. Yeah. Um, which which I saw Twitter exploded about, uh, because they were going, Well, what's the point in having an electric vehicle then? Like, per in, in terms of personal saving. What band are they going to put it in? Yeah, exactly. Because my old Seat was 30 quid a year. Yeah. The one I've got now is 160 odd quid a year. Yeah. My Merc. But, so what band are they going to put these in? Yeah. Are they going to set up a new band for electric vehicles? Yeah. yeah. Or it, or... I think they've realised when they've said that we're going to get rid of all fucking petrol cars, but all... Stop the sale of petrol cars by, or few, <coughs> anything but electric cars by 2030. What they realise is how much they're actually going to lose in revenue. Exactly. Just think about it. If every, how many? I don't know how million million cars are on the road at the minute, but you lose all. It must be billions they rake in on on uh, road excise duty. Mm. It must be billions. Well, if everybody's gone electric and they're not paying it. They're going to lose billions. So you knew it was coming. Yeah. It'd just be interesting to see what sort of rate they set it at. Yeah. And like I said, there were people <coughs> on Twitter. Were, people on, not everyone, but there were people on Twitter saying, well, next time it's time for me to upgrade or change my car or whatever, what's the point of me going electric? I need if a piss again. I'll be back in a second. I can't afford to buy an electric car. Right. I can't afford it. Right. But that, but... I mean, my Merc only cost me six and a half grand, you know. I mean, I couldn't afford any more than that. And what's a fucking electric car? 30, 40,000 pounds. I can't afford yeah. that. 
Not on my fucking pension. Seven hundred pound every four weeks. Yeah. I think a lot of people were doing, I got the impression that a lot of people were doing it on some kind of finance so that you can upgrade or change. You know, like with phones where you, you pay monthly and then after a certain amount of time you can upgrade and you carry on paying, but you can upgrade your... Yeah, and so, well, yeah you I can do it, PCP. It's yeah, I think a lot of people were doing it on that. So it's like in a couple of years' time when it's time to upgrade or change their car, what's the point in going to another electric if, if they're already running one? when it will just be cheaper or at the same price to run a diesel. Um, ECP you know, finance, a... bubble finance, is the biggest fucking con on the planet, isn't it, Mickey? Mate, I had one. I, my Seattle Beetle, I had it. Yeah, it's the biggest fucking con on the planet. I paid three years over it and I still owe yeah, it. you've got it. nothing. You have nothing. You start with nothing and you oh. end with nothing. It's cheaper to actually yeah. rent a car. Well, they, they gave me the option. I could have paid it. I could have paid the balance, which is about four and a half grand, and kept it. Or they're ever so generous. You can have another new car, but lo and behold, the price of that had gone up fifty quid a month over that three years. So yeah, right. No, I'm not fucking doing that either. I give it them back in the end. I said, no, shove it up your fucking ass. And I went and bought my Toledo for yeah. cash. <laughs> Yeah, they're, so they're, you want they're, to they're either using that? PCP finance, Tracy, or they're leasing them. Either way, yeah. it's either yeah. way that they're not owning them. I mean, the, the Tesla yeah. Model 3 is about £38,000. Yeah. It's not, you know... And that's a cheap, cheap one, isn't it? But Steve, what I was going to say, I read that off of your list of what you wanted to talk about. What It was it was the Chancellor's speech that um, yeah. reminded me. So what did you want to talk about the... Chancellor's speech. No, I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. I've just got to tell you, right? Did you know that I had a TV? My TV went wrong last weekend. I told you, didn't I? Yeah. And I had a new TV yeah. delivered yeah, on Monday. Yeah, you got a broken one. Was and it was broken. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had another one delivered Wednesday. That's absolutely fine. But yesterday, they came to pick up the broken TV, which was fine. Um, they left this card. Right? Arrow uh, XL belonged yeah. to delivery. Right? Right. Oh, we hope yeah. you've had a great delivery experience today. Please share your review on Trustpilot. They came to the house and picked up a box. <laughs> it was absolutely <laughs> fucking orgasmic. Right? It was the best <laughs> orgasm I've ever had. I couldn't believe it. I opened up the door and I ejaculated instantly. Right? I almost passed out with pleasure at these two guys coming to pick up this box. I've never had an experience like it. Oh my God. And, Out of all my and, life experiences, this was the best ever. And the thing that topped it off was they took the broken telly away. Yeah. So not only, not had only did they knock on the door and pick the telly up, but they walked up the path with it. And I was like, oh my God. I've never known anything as exciting <laughs> or as wonderful as this. <laughs> What the fuck are they all about? See, Please um... evaluate our delivery. It's a fucking delivery. Right? It wasn't a delivery. They got it was a simple a... job. No. Come in, Steve. pick it up, and fuck off. Steve, it wasn't even a delivery. It was a collection. Yeah. So they didn't I mean. deliver anything to you. Arrive at my door, pick it up, and fuck off. What can be yeah. difficult about that? What needs evaluating about that? They turned up, put a box, <laughs> and they left. You know what that? I'll give them five, five stars, fucking great, yeah. It's, it's not like, you know, it's not like a five star. If it was a five course, if they had, a, if they came and delivered and bought a five course meal with them, then I could evaluate yeah. it, couldn't I? Yeah. Or they said they bought a movie for me to watch. They, they, they turned up and proposed to my wife. Yeah. They turned up, <laughs> left the box, and went. It was fucking wonderful. It was brilliant. They turn up and give you a yeah. reach around and left. That'd be <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> right, yes. Before we get all... Johnson's speech, I've got a graphic to show you. I have got a graphic. To... Oh, oh, boy. Have I got a graphic to show you. There we go. Right. This is a graphic. This is this is a graphic and a half, this is, right? Okay. Here we go. Oh, You're going to love this graphic. Look at that. Look at that. It says per capita com 
consumption of cheese brackets US in, in the green line. And the blue line is number of people who died by becoming entangled in their bed sheets. And these lines are almost alongside each other. So what we can assume is that the people who are eating far too much cheese are also dying from being entangled in their sheets. <laughs> That's fantastic. I've eaten too much cheese. Oh, my duvet's getting me. <laughs> See, see, this is what happens when you become obsessed with cheese and it goes too far. Right? Oh. You eat cheese, you become you. you the, the odds of you becoming entangled in your bed cheese are unbelievable. What does that say on the left? I like the way it's been going up yeah, since the yeah. year two thousand. What does it say on the left? Does it say pounds? Hang on, hang on. Is that yeah. pounds of cheese? Pounds of cheese. Yeah. Oh my god. of cheese right, dollars yeah. oh that's hilarious so basically the more pounds of cheese that's i've got it now the more pounds of cheese that you eat the more likely you are to die from tangling yourself in the bed clothes oh that is hilarious i thought you'd like that graphic it's been going up it's been going up steadily since the year 2000 yep. oh it's an unbelievable it's an unbelievable correlation isn't it no unless you sleep i don't want the, the answer is sleep how i sleep which is naked with nothing on me at all oh no but if you eat enough cheese i'm sure some bed clothes will probably have to I, find I, you I, I can't i can't have any bed clothes on me at all because i sweat so much. do you know what the other night right the other night i couldn't believe it i actually managed to take the quilt cover off of the quilt completely what, in your sleep completely in, in your sleep in the night i woke up in the morning and i looked at the floor and I've got the quilt on one side of the floor and the quilt on the other side, quilt cover on the other side of the floor. And I look at them, how the fuck did that happen? I had to go and ask the mission. Oh, no, you... I know. I know how. I know how. You'd been eating cheese. Well, there You've is that. There cheese. is that because I did have a cheese and pickle sandwich that night. There you go. So, so the duvet <laughs> cover has uh, detached uh, itself. So that graph's accurate. Yeah, there you go. Both the duvet and the duvet cover were working in cahoots to tangle you up. <laughs> oh, there we go. Could See, my cheese? theory about cheese in the US is correct. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. Told you they were obsessed with it. Yeah. Yeah. And oh. there's a correlation. It just has to show how dangerous cheese is. Jim says a bit rough past few days, but seems to be passing. So, is that because of your illness or because of the chemotherapy you've been taking, Jim? That's the question. Because I know that after Tuesday, you thought this chemotherapy, there's nothing to it, and I thought to myself, yeah, he doesn't know that with it, it's cumulative. I mean, I feel that way. The first, the first chemo session is great. Three days afterwards, I feel like absolute shit. So, is it down to you feeling rough because of the chemo or rough because of your cancer? That's, that's my question to you. Neuropathy. Oh, yeah. Neuropathy is not. I've still got it in, the, in my fingers and toes. Neuropathy is not very nice at all. Have they given you, uh, they'll either give you gabapentin or amitriptyline for it. So have they, uh, have they done either of those? But yeah, the neuropathy. I know exactly what you mean. And again, the neuropathy is one of those things that. Oh, yeah, I've got swollen ankles. Well, only one of my ankles got swollen, so. Neuropathy is one of those things that unless you've actually experienced it, you don't know what it's really like. And it's, I call it pins and needles plus, and it's absolutely terrible. I've got it right in the tips of my fingers now. Um, yeah, I'm fine to about there. Right in the tips of my fingers to about there. So, and it's just one of my ankles that's got swollen. In other news, hair started falling out today. Are you going to do a Steve and get rid of it, or are you going to just like let it happen naturally? I haven't got any more, but they've all gone for me. All right, Mickey's actually talking to his dog. She wants to go out. Or, of course, you might not be talking about the hair on your head, in which case, oh, right, you're going to do next chemo then, Shay. She's um, she had a biscuit. Now she decides she wants to go yeah, on. Yeah, time time for a wee now. I'm having a biscuit. 
a wet hat. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this time of year. Oh, at this time of year, not both you and Steve not having the um the hair because Steve shaved before you probably know this. Steve shaved before it started falling out, but it's got to the point now where he instead of having to shave his face every day and his head, I think, but he's only he used to have to shave his face every day. And now he's down to about once every three or four days. Because occasionally he'd forget to shave and he'd turn up on the street looking like he desperately needed a shave. Getting old was another su subject you wanted to talk about, Steve. Yeah, we already, we already sort of did, but uh, Jim... You've done that? Oh. Yeah, I'll tell you now, Jim, you need to wear a hat. That is something essential. You need to wear a hat. I've, I've, I've now got a collection of hats. This is, uh, this is my second favourite. My favourite is in the car. Um, and it's a proper one. It's even got a feather in the side. But uh, you'll need a hat, definitely. Um, I don't go out now without a hat. Even in winter, you can really burn the top of your head, especially if you're rough. <laughs> especially if, you, if you're like me, that I've had hair all my life, and I'm suddenly without it. Um, having hair, really, having no hair, you've got to be really careful. Um, oh, walking stick. Oh, okay. Ugh. Is it that bad? I didn't think it had spread that far. Um, Sorry. That's, that's one of the things. Jim's, I think Jim's about your age, Trace. I think Jim's about 50. So, um, getting old there. 57 he is. So he's sort of halfway between me and you, Steve. Oh. Ish. Because I'm 51 next weekend. So. Right. Oh, and then you're 63 a couple of weekends after. So, they're balancing it out. <laughs> oh, I'm not 63 the weekend after. No, a couple of weekends after no. I said. So like a couple of weeks later. Got a pain in hip that struggles to bear weight. If it lasts longer than two weeks, get it looked at. Yeah, that's how I um, see things. I, 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 I give it two weeks and if it's getting worse or it hasn't gone away, then I get it looked at. If it's going away <coughs> after those two weeks, then I kind of like, OK, I'll give it another week. Um, and then after that week, it's usually gone, whatever it is. But that's how I usually um, see things. It seems to ease up and then come back. So I think I'm over it and then it comes back again. So I think it's me arthritis. I don't know. Problem with lung cancer is by the time it's diagnosed, it's already stage four. <sighs> yeah. But, and again, that's something that I would never have known because you kind of like you think according to the according to the advice that the nhs or not not just the nhs but the advice that you get is if you've got a cough or a cough that hasn't gone away and things like this then go and see a doctor and if it's lung cancer and everything you start thinking oh well you know if they catch it early enough because obviously you must have had you must have symptoms and you have a little bit of a cough that sort of gets a little bit worse but clearly not Rarely symptoms until then. That's a bit like um, uh, pancreatic cancer. You don't get any symptoms generally until it's stage four or terminal, which is why people die from it, because it's a silent one, literally silent, and, until it gets to the point where it's, well, we can't do anything because it's spread. Or it's picked up in a scan or an x-ray when you weren't looking yes. for it. Yes. Like, what happened yes. to you? Yes. Yeah, I have zero lung symptoms still. Yes. And that's what I'm reading more and more as well. You know, it's coming up in the news about how, you know, or, you know, like um, MSN and stuff, like when you log out of Hotmail and things, you get the news and there's, you know, there's stuff about, oh, this, this woman had no, has got, has, she's got lung cancer or stage three or stage four lung cancer and she, she had no symptoms and it was found because um because of something I, I you know i can't think now but because of something and you think what wow you wouldn't even have thought of that i did a cardio test the other day and i'm still having the fitness of a 35 year old yeah that'll be uh probably all the cycling you, you cyclist aren't you jim says a doc says that's why i'm in little trouble now says it can only help me fight it okay fitness that's why it says it can oh right the fitness yes oh well that's good 
100 miles a week for five or six years, blimey. He did do it as well, because I'm uh, he's on my Strava, and I watch him do it, so he really did. So, yeah, he had a high level of fitness, which, of course, has helped him. Whereas I haven't got a high level of fitness, but my my high level of fitness is the exact opposite. Tracy, you knew me when I was skinny and fit, and you've seen pictures of me skinny and fit. My cancer. I've got pictures of you skinny and fit. Hey? Yeah. <laughs> I've got pictures of you skinny and fit. Um, my cancer has done the exact opposite. Since I've had cancer, I've lost all my fitness because I'm now virtually house band and chair band. Um, I don't need a wheelchair indoors at the moment. I'm just about to get around indoors, but I do need the stair lift to go upstairs. My bum washing toilet's upstairs, so I do need the stair lift to go up there. Uh, my downstairs toilet, I've just got one of those hand squirrels, which is not a lot of fun. Not as much fun as my bum washer. That's that's great fun. Yeah. There you go. Jim's putting on weight as well, like me. It's not because of the cancer. It's because you just stopped being... You stopped the exercise like I did. I mean, I, I don't know what stone is. What's a stone? Seven kilos, I think. About six, seven kilos. So that's I, I don't work in stone. Sorry. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've shot up. I should be 70 kilos. For my height, I should be 70 kilos. I'm currently 84 kilos and climbing. So that's 84 kilos. 14 kilos that's is... two stone overweight. Hey? It's about two stone overweight-ish. Yeah, 14 kilos is about... Two and a half stone. What I just said. Yeah. Two, two, two ish stone. Yeah, so it's, but something like, because basically what I do is when I hear kilos, I just double it. I don't do the extra. It's 2.2 2. 2. 2 pounds for kilo. Yeah, so, so when you said an extra 14 kilos, my brain went, yeah, that's just like, that's over two stone, somewhere over two stone. Yeah, two and a half stone. It's actually yeah. 28, 28, 35 pounds. So 35 pounds is just under two and a half stones. Oh, so, yeah. And yeah, that's I'm the other thing. To... <laughs> Keep eating. The other thing, the other thing, I don't know whether they've given you the advice yet, Jim. Keep warm. Fuck me. Keep warm. I'll tell you what, right? I'll tell you what. Um, our central heating came on yesterday morning, and I couldn't believe that we burnt four pound in gas just for the central heating coming on in the morning, right? Fuck it out, it is actually cheaper to have a week in cods than it is to heat the house in the morning. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. When we have a cold spell, I'm going to fly it to cods just to keep fucking warm because it's cheaper. Four quid, fucking four quid, just to heat the house for three hours in the morning. It's fucking unbelievable. Yes, I've got a smart meter. When I'm in my den, where I am now, I can wear a T-shirt and shorts because I've got two PCs in here. And they both chuck out a tremendous amount of heat, especially when I'm streaming. I mean, what's my CPU? My CPU is running at 84 degrees centigrade at the moment. So, uh, and it's chucking that heat out into my room. And it actually keeps my room quite warm, so much so that inside here, in my room at the moment, it is 36 degrees centigrade. I've just had to put a fan on. In the rest of the house, it's about 18. So in this room, I keep warm. But in other rooms, yeah. When I'm out in the dining room building my model, yeah, fuck me. Um, I've actually got heated gloves. I've got fingerless heated gloves that I use. Um, if it gets too bad. So, yeah, and uh, they tell you to keep warm, but they don't realise you've got to fucking pay for it. Fuck me, four quid just to turn my heating on. Yeah, Mickey. It certainly is. And that's the, that, that's the crap thing about it. Is that, you know, the... The, the, what's supposed to happen is your PIP, your PIP, personal independence payments, is supposed to pay for this, but it doesn't cover it. It doesn't. It's not. Once you once you've covered the amount of money that it takes to get to doctors or hospital appointments, and run the car that gets you there. Oh, I get those. I get, I get all those back. Claim all those back. What? You claim your travel expenses back. You don't. You, you claim your travel expenses back. Right. Yes, apply well, for PIP, Jim. Apply for it. Definitely apply for PIP, Jim. Anyway, but basically what I'm saying is is that the PIP is supposed to be to help you with any AIDS and yeah. um not necessarily all right, not necessarily hospital appointments then, but let's you need to go shopping and things like this and you can't walk there, so you'd have to charge your battery or you know, go in the car or whatever. It's supposed to help with your day-to-day -day expenses, PIP is. Yeah. 
Um, and then you've got the price rises for heating and things like this, and they're saying to you to keep warm, but <coughs> the PIP hasn't gone up to, to be able to cover heating the house a little bit in the morning. So you're now paying for 8, 12, 16, 20, Hello, Eris. 25 pounds. Eris! Good evening. Yeah, half hand definitely. Yes, we know half hand dead. No, we saw it die, bastards. But it, but, but so, so it's all very well them saying that the money's going to come later. Uh, but that doesn't cover it now. So what the fuck are you supposed to do now? Oh, it's four pounds in the morning. I'll stick that on the credit card. Fucking, that was unbelievable. When I saw, when I saw the meter, I thought, you know, four quid just to heat the house for three hours. Yeah. I'll leave mine on 20. I'll leave mine on 19. I wouldn't be able to do that. I'm having to do, a bit, of, I'm having to do a bit of an emergency repair on my... Uh, on my pick line, yeah. That was only fixed a couple of days ago. A week ago. Oh, did, did you miss Thursday's appointment oh, then? Fuck. Just pop that up completely. No, they phoned me on Wednesday and said, don't come. Oh, OK. Uh, what are you referring to, Jim? Oh, My pick line. The pick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they live in? Because uh, one of the drugs um, that I'm on, Doxorubicon, is uh, highly dangerous if it, uh, if it goes anywhere outside of the vein. In fact, it actually warns on the drug when it comes that this must only be done only done by intravenous port um anywhere else um uh death or major trauma could occur so they actually warn you about it uh beforehand uh that's why they leave it in uh because it's a bastard to take out um and it runs uh it runs all the way up to my heart which is you gotta keep it in and keep it keep it in. you can't just yeah i i know what the problem is um not exactly what the problem is you can't just take it out yeah um they also take my blood so they also give me uh if i get neutropenic sepsis or anything like that they also uh they also give it to me via i've got to do this myself sean's one the bed they also give it to me via the pick line um again it makes sure that the medicine that gets where it's going um needs to it gets where it's going um as it needs to be there all right come on get on there you oh i mean it'd be a pain in the ass it's, it's, it's actually minor surgery to have the pick line put in um is that a rocky horror netris you'll be yeah um it's funny funny enough no it's not it's actually um part of a pair of earrings which i think i'm going to just keep as a necklace what i'll do is i'll take the the ear the ear bit off but it's not it's just kind of like a, a mouth talk because the rocky horror if i'm right has got i'd have to look it actually because i might be thinking of the wrong one but one of them's got a a lip bite and one of them's got a tongue but it may well have been rocky inspired so um so yeah but i like it I thought it was your lipstick in, inspired because yeah. it looks exactly like your mouth under That's your mouth. Exactly. The, it's supposed to, because well, I was wearing it as earrings. I liked it because I thought it looked like a mouth talking. And yeah. that's what we do. So it's like a second <laughs> mouth giving its bloody opinion. <laughs> I didn't have maintenance this week. I'm normally supposed to go to the hospital once a week on a Thursday to get the dressing change. But they phoned me on Wednesday and said, we're really busy tomorrow. You can skip the pick line dressing change this week and just come in next week for it. So as long as I get through till Thursday next week, I'll be fine. But I just got to make sure that that bit there stays covered, which I've done. I'll put another. As you can see, I've got spare dressing. I've got loads of spare dressing. So um, I just got to keep it covered. So I'll get Sean to do a proper dressing in the morning. The reason, the reason for the pick line, Jim, is, is twofold. First of all, to make sure that the cytotoxic drugs don't leak outside of the uh, vein where they continue. But the second reason is because it's delivered directly to the heart, it's delivered at a faster rate than a vein can. 
so they can actually infuse me much faster via the pick line than they can the rain they can infuse me at something like five mils a second and blood doesn't travel that fast blood travels about one millisecond so it's about five times faster than my heart can pump the blood and that's why they put a pick line in and it's impermanently because it goes in there follows the main artery all the way down and it rests just above my heart um so that's why it's uh that's why it's left in permanently while you're having treatment i hope that answers your question jim we're on different journeys jim we're on different journeys um your chemotherapy is different from mine because your cancer is different from mine so that's why you don't need one um you're obviously not uh, you, they're obviously not giving you any dangerous drugs via via your veins oh yeah if you were if you're on the same chemotherapy as me you'd be having a pick line so but you're on tablets all my chemotherapy is done with injections infusions i should say long infusions i'm in that fucking chemo suite from nine o'clock in the morning or nearly six o'clock at night yeah you see mine are my, mine, are, mine are just infusions i have uh i have four infusions and then uh then i have tablet well i have four infusions uh and then but four days afterwards, I'm taking high dose steroids. And then from day five till day 12, I'm injecting myself with the uh, with the stuff, with the crap. So it's different. If our cancers are different, so it's different treatments. I would imagine yours is a lot more, your cancer is a lot more aggressive, especially if you're losing your hair already. I mean, you only had the chemo Tuesday and you're losing your hair already. It took me a month before I started to lose mine. I don't know, see, this is the thing that my mother not telling me about her cancer journey. She just glossed over a lot of it. But she had a pick line. She only had chemo twice, got chemo going in twice, and she didn't lose her hair. I didn't. So, I, this, yeah, is, no. this is my full thought of chemo, Tracy. I haven't lost my hair on the first three because it was a different chemo regimen. I never had. Yeah, the... Did you have a pick line in the other ones? You did, though. Yeah, I've had pick you? lines each time, yeah 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 but that's what i'm saying about how it's weird you know everyone's cancer journey is is different yeah. my mum didn't lose any hair on her head whatsoever uh or her face but she had a pick line where they had to put the stuff in yeah. twice it was the first week and then the fourth week but she, and she had six weeks of radiotherapy so it's people's, people's journeys are different i mean i didn't lose my hair on any of the first three times because i knew i wouldn't because it was it was they were gentle chemotherapies I, I jim's got an aggressive cancer that if, if left unchecked will kill him in a matter of weeks my cancer will kill me in months or years so it's not it's, it's what's called indolent which is slow growing um and it takes a long time so they don't have to hit it with 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 the um with the real powerful stuff like jim's got uh, you know jim jim's jim's chemotherapy tablets are uh, killing cancer at a massive rate Mine is even our chop, what I'm on now, which is considered a very strong chemotherapy, is still gentle compared to the chemotherapy Jim's probably on. Mm -hmm. But it is different journeys. Yeah, do you know what? I that that's why I get the feeling why because my mum was supposed she had that um oh something like September through to November, and then the scan in January found that she still had she they cleared up the it was anal cancer they cleared up the initial tumor but the mets on her liver and lung had got worse we didn't know this until after she died and i've read all the medical notes but we did know that she was supposed to have more chemo in january and she refused it and that was it so i got this weird feeling that she refused it because they told her that this lot would your hair would fall out and she didn't want it. I that, that's me, that would be my mum all over. It would make total sense if I read in her notes, refused chemo because she didn't uh, she didn't want her hair to fall out. The reason she the reason she gave us was because she was too stressed about uh, my brother's wife dying. So she couldn't think about it at the moment, and she maintained that for four months, and then she died. So. How do you eat spinach yeah. when you jog? Because you, you get your balance and you get it end, end up getting it up your nose when, you, when you're eating it out of the can and just, you know. Just... <laughs> That's if it's canned spinach. You, you could be eating it out of the packet. Oh, right. Ooh. But the fresh stuff. But raw um, spinach? Yeah, raw spinach. Raw spinach is fine. Raw spinach is fine. 
Uh, oh, tips for the anti <laughs> In the US, one in two women and one in three men will develop cancer in their lifetime. Yeah, it's about one in two here. Yeah, 50%. Uh, well, no, what so what the research is 50% of people here will be affected by yeah. cancer in their lifetime. Look at that cheese. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Jim, a lot give up and don't don't tell Jim's anyone. Jim's absolutely yeah, right. See, That's exactly what they do. I I, <clears> I just... Uh, my, my mother was a bit strange anyway, and after she died, we realised just quite how strange she was. Um, she really... She wasn't giving us updates on her cancer journey or anything like that. Um, uh, we knew what she had, and she wouldn't even tell us what stage she was at. She, she literally said, oh, they didn't tell me that. And my sister was like, no, that's one. That's the first thing they tell you is how far you are, how, what stage it is. Well, because um, it's, you know, it, they, you know this, Steve, it's it's staging and like you've got 3A. You know what I mean? Like I'm stage 3A. Yeah, so so it, it's stage plus how far it's got or something like that. Anyway. Staging so, tells um, you how far it's progressed and the letters tell yes. you how aggressive it is. That's yeah, so that's what I mean. She didn't Base tell us three any means of it's that. above and below my diaphragm, and A yeah. means it's slow growing or indolent. If it was right, C, well, she didn't, Jim's got stage C. She didn't tell us any of that, and I reckon that she was probably at stage three C, where because they, it, 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 uh, I can't pronounce it, but they were Mets on a liver and lung. They managed to get rid of the initial tumor and the Mets should have been controlled by chemotherapy which she refused the, the second lot so um and um but she wasn't telling us she wasn't giving us the updates or anything like this which i know it was in it within her rights but she was telling us she was telling us that she was doing fine doing okay there was no cancer got all the cancer's gone and the next thing i know she i'm visiting her in hospital dying so I can talk about it now, but um, I, 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 I'm, and I'm still really fucking pissed off about it. Um, she didn't give us the chance to help, say goodbye or anything like, not say goodbye, but like come to terms with it. Um, so I'm pissed off about it um, in that respect. But I can talk about it without being freaked out because I suffered terribly with PTSD uh, after seeing this little old lady head on a pillow that was shrunk and it's awful. But she didn't tell us. She, she didn't give, give us any warning and that's you know so that was that was totally up to her that's fine but i'm annoyed that she didn't give us the opportunity to come to terms with it um anyway yes so uh eris is glad she's in canada because of the cost in uh average cost of medical care and drugs uh tops oh sorry in the us tops forty two thousand mm. in the year following cancer diagnosis mm. Uh, it, it, this stuff is hard to think about. Yes, um, Jim says my nan and granddad refused treatment, but they did tell us precisely. That's the thing. If my mum had said to me, they've offered me chemo, but I can't face anymore, so I don't know whether it's going to be six weeks, six months, or six years. Um, then at least we could have done something, but she just absolutely hid it. So uh, anyway, I'm going to fight this. I'm going to fight this fucker till the very end. Yeah, see, that's what I thought my mum would have done because my mum would always went. She, everybody saw her as a strong woman. She's gonna fight it, and I'm gonna fight it to the very gonna... end. Yeah, I'm gonna fight it until it puts me in bed. When it puts me in Which bed, will be in about ten minutes. Yeah, about oh, half an hour. No, when it puts me in bed permanently, that's when I stop fighting. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you're right. You're right, Goddess. It is, it is hard to think about. I mean, you've got Jim there, who. Only had who, who is less. He was only diagnosed with cancer four weeks ago, um, and it came as a major shock to him. And you got me, who oh, I've been living with it for ten years now. So it's uh, it, it's something you have to think about um, quite a lot, and it, it is hard to think about. But when you've got it and you're going through the treatment that I am and the treatment that Jim is, you you, you do think about it a lot. Um, it's like. That's Sorry, exactly what I'm going to be doing, Jim, and I've already got, I've got enough, I have enough morphine here to do it, more than enough morphine here to do it. Uh, do they force you to fight it? No. Force me to fight it. In fact, Tracy wanted to say something. When Tracy's finished, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a little story about uh, the guy in my treatment suite. Come on, Tracy. Uh, yeah, no, um, I was going to say that the statistics say that one in two 
50 percent of people will get cancer sometime <laughs> in their life and then i it, my siblings there's me and two others which means that at least one of us is going to have cancer and that's a horrible sobering thought at least one of us is going to ha have cancer quite possibly two because of the way statistics work it's not one in three there we go look mickey's got a sore shoulder um but so at least one of out of me and my my siblings are going to have cancer and i look at my children and i've got two children at least one of them are going to have ch have cancer and it's it's just it's an awful thing to have to you don't have to think about it but it but you do you know what i mean it's one of those things that it, it's just and the older you get the more likely it's going to happen so every day that goes past i'm i'm perhaps another step towards cancer it's just sobering thoughts anyway carry on steve no, god it's just said do they do they force you to fight it no they don't force you to fight it at all um they encourage you to fight it yeah of course they do but in fact there's a guy in the same cancer suite that i am that gets treated the same time that i do that the nurses and doctors they they actually that they, they can't verbalize how they feel about him but you can see it in their eyes and you can see it in their faces um he's got lung cancer like jim has and he comes into the chemotherapy suite and they wire him up and they start infusing him and after about half an hour he unplugs his infusion pump grabs hold of it and leaves he leaves the suite and then he walks out into the car park which you can see through the windows and has a cigarette and you can see it on the faces of the nurses and you can see it on the faces of the doctors that they just think that they're just wasting their wasting their time um and he comes back in and he carries all his treatment and half an hour later he goes out and have another cigarette and he sits right underneath the sign that says no smoking anywhere in this hospital grounds and he, he with his infusion pump pumping his chemo in to kill his lung cancer which was caused by smoking and he's smoking away and like i say you can see it on the faces of the nurses and the doctors they just they, they just look so disappointed so disappointed that, that was a little story i was going to tell you so whilst they don't force us to fight it they do encourage us but there are some people right i mean it, it, to me right knowing how much chemotherapy treatment costs it's a, i think if i was a doctor and I know you can't do it because I took the Hippocratic Oath, but I would I would be wanting to refuse to treat somebody who's got lung cancer that doesn't give up smoking. I think if you've got if you've got if you've got lung cancer, you need to give up smoking because that's the best way you can help yourself. If you're not willing to give up smoking, then what well, why should I treat you? Why should I want you? Why should why should why should the NHS spend thousands and thousands of pounds keeping you alive? When you're not doing anything for yourself and i'm not an anti i used to smoke i, I won't tell lies it'll be nearly four years i've given up smoking um i'm not an anti-smoker but it just this guy really does piss me off and i happen to know that his infusions cost several thousand dollars a time and he comes in and he has them and he has cigarettes halfway through and i think why you really aren't helping yourself maybe it's me maybe my attitude's wrong uh i just yeah sorry carry on guys no, it's good to hear you having a rant. It's you've taken over from Mickey for a change. Yeah. <laughs> Eris says eighty percent of uh, all cancers are in, se in in people over the age of seventy. And then Jim says, I think our NHS is the best system in the world. I couldn't have gotten better treatment if I went privately. And Eris says, I think we should help anyone, even if they don't help themselves. Money isn't more important than, hum than human life. Yeah, but you know it's. it's <sighs> like steve was just saying about that guy it's it's just all the time they're treating least... him somebody who really isn't in need isn't being treated yeah 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 he's taking up a place of somebody who isn't smoking and really does want to get better and things like this yeah. so and i do want to get better and and i gave up smoking when they I, as well as cancer i've got an incurable lung condition with bronchi ecstasis which was caused by my cancer um and it put me in hospital for most of 2019 well, when they told me i had it the very first thing i did was give up smoking because they said you've got bronchi ecstasis which is a serious lung condition um give up smoking and i did i never smoked from the minute the doctor told me that i had bronchi ecstasis i stopped smoking and i haven't smoked since uh but i'm not an anti-smoker i mean look mickey's smoking and i don't really give a shit but i am anti-people who um who are uh 
who are uh, who are um, not willing to help themselves. <laughs> I'd like to think if Mickey was diagnosed with lung cancer, he'd give up smoking. Yeah. Immediately. There you go. So, yeah, Mickey, Mickey is close and to 70. But Reese, is he close to 70? This, this, is, uh, this is one thing uh, Andy just said. And Sorry, bovine is Andrew. Uh, just said NHS saved my pancreas. Now he's been he suffered with pancreatitis uh, two or three times, um, and he doesn't smoke. Uh, and, and at the time when they were checking him out to see what was the cause of the pancreatitis, because it it could have been pancreatic cancer, so they did all the all the stuff that they had to do. Turned out not to be, um, but he just he's just got a bit of a delicate pancreas. We don't smoke, and but when he sees somebody smoking, or if he's in an, in a situation where he like you, you get the waft of cigarette smoke and that, and he goes, "Oh, I could really, oh, I wish I could smoke, I wish," it, and, and everything, but he he shouldn't smoke because one of the biggest causes of pancreatic cancer is cigarette smoking. Uh, even though it's you know, no, no, it's nothing to do with the um, the pancreas when you smoke a cigarette, it's cigarette smoking. Uh, it's like my, my mum's cancer um, is one of the risk factors is cigarette smoking and she didn't give up. But so, yeah, so that's why I say to him, because also when he was young, he had um, uh, pneumonia twice. And um, just the worst thing in the world would be that if he put cigarettes into a weakened set of lungs with pancreas issues, <laughs> Uh, you know, he could end up um, causing a cancer problem. So, oh, that's that's. I'll tell you what. I I I'm not like your Andrew Tracy. Um, I yeah. smokers don't bother me. I can quite happily stand in a group of smokers, and it won't bother me. It doesn't make me want a cigarette, and and I won't lecture them. Same. Same. I won't. Same. I won't lecture them. It, it really different. doesn't bother me one way or t'other. In fact, I quite like the smell of a freshly lit cigarette. It actually smells quite nice. Uh, a freshly lit Virginia tobacco cigarette smells quite nice. Doesn't make me want one. Uh, I think I think some of it though is the because he cut suffers with anxiety. And yes, I know cigarette smoking actually causes anxiety because it's a stimulant. But you when you when you suffer with anxiety and you put a drug in, it's that initial kind of ah feeling that you get. And I think that's what he misses is having anything that makes him go ah. We could have a because, wank. yeah, that's that, that doesn't last. You can't carry on walking down the road having a wank. I mean, Jesus. Why not? You, you live in a part of London where it's normal. Jim Jim says smoke me makes me want to throw up. I have to walk away, but I'm not arsy about it. Each to their own. And Eris says, I mean, smoking weed hopefully isn't as bad. That's what so... I was going to come to. There, that's the only thing about not it's smoking. Proved as worse. It's worse. Smoking weed is actually worse than yes, smoking Yes, it is because cigarettes. it's unregulated and uh, you don't know what you're putting in you. You're absolutely right. All I was going to say is that's the only thing about giving up smoking that I really, really miss. Um, I used to smoke me weed as well. Um, and since I gave up smoking, I gave up weed the same day that I gave up smoking. I could vape weed. I could, I could have weed as an edible, but I didn't bother. I thought, well, fuck it. If I'm giving up smoking... Um, that's how I smoke my weed. I might as well give up weed as well. And I did, and I'm really glad I did. And I've, since that day that I gave up smoking, I've not touched weed either. And Mickey's right, weed is dangerous because the first thing you do is you use a roach. And instead of having your tobacco filtered through a filter, you're actually, with the roach, you're actually taking it in unfiltered and encouraging it unfiltered. And you really don't know what's in, with weed, with green, you know what's in it. But with resin, fuck if I know what's in it. So it is very dangerous. Hasn't sorry, it's, Jim it's, says like it's partly what's caused my son's psychosis. <laughs> He's smoking that. He doesn't do it anymore. But it's it's what's partly what's done it. So I mean oh, fuck my piece blood. of their own, I'm but I ate the fucking Your stuff. Your blood is on, on having a dance oh, tonight, isn't it? Jim says, I vape weed to satiate cravings, make grow green, always clean, he grows for personal use. But hasn't, so I'm presuming you're doing something to the weed to be able to vape it. And hasn't that caused like popcorn lung in the US? I may be wrong, but I seem to remember something about if you process it into something you can vape, 
No, all right, okay. Then I've, I'd, I'd heard something about people vaping. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Nonsense. If I was going to have it, I mean, I mean, I, I think as well, the thing is, is the putting something to your face. And I remember that. I was a smoker for 20 years and I remember that. I want to put something to my face and smoke it and suck it. Um, but um, I don't worry about that. No, I don't have anything like that. Um, so, but I was going to say, you know, couldn't you get the same kind of hit if you made it into hash brownies or something rather than vaping it? But of course, I understand the thing. Did you hear any of that, Steve? Yeah, I heard every word of it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, what do you, had you heard about the reports that doing something to um, uh, weed to make it vapable yeah. causes pops on the lungs? There's, there's, there's all sorts of rumors going around. Um... Uh, the the best way the best way I understand is you can actually not a vape you can actually get little heaters to actually heat the vape I forget what they're called the same price as vapes um apparently they're the best way of, of getting the vape because uh, they actually heat the vape gently uh they heat the weed gently to extract the THC which is the thing that you want I forget what they're called um and they're oh. available on eBay they're about thirty quid each battery operated little, little, little tiny little ovens um. Uh, Volcano, yeah, something or like volcano. that. It, it knows yeah. what I'm talking about. Um, yeah. they, 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 they just basically heat it up gradually, and that's the best way of doing it. But, like I say, since I gave up smoking, I thought, well, I've smoked weed, I've never taken weed any other way than smoking it. And I thought, if I'm giving up smoking, I might as well give up weed because if I'm going to have a joint every now and again, I haven't really given up smoking, have I? Yeah, no, no. no exactly. So, I thought, fuck it, I, I might as well knock both things on the head. And if you and if you're and if you're smoking weed as well, you're still taking in carcinogens. Even if you smoke pure weed with no tobacco, you're still taking carcinogens. You can't smoke smoke pure weed with no tobacco. No, I know. But what I'm saying is, even if you did, even if you did, you can't. But even if you did, you're still taking in the carcinogenic smoke. In smoke that is carcinogenic. I'm glad that I stopped. And it's been it's been nearly four years now. I'm glad that I stopped. Um, because uh, I didn't realise it at the time, how much it stupefied me. Um, once I've come out of it, and I don't t and now, nearly four years down the line, I realise just how much it stupefied me, and I didn't like it. Um, I didn't like it at all, and I won't go back to it, and I'm glad I've stopped. Yeah, see, Jim, the thing is, I'm not <coughs> criticising at all. It's just, it's it, honestly coming from a, a place of, of care. Um, you know that I'm 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 not going. Oh, it's bad for you. Oh, weed is bad for you. Ooh, ooh, you shouldn't be doing it. Honestly, uh, I'm just questioning because I'm interested. I'm, I'm to be honest, I'm quite interested in, in finding ways to get weed into me. And I'm not a weed smoker. And I'm I honestly haven't touched weed for probably coming up for twenty years now. But I've got to a point in my life where I'm kind of going. Oh, I'd quite like to have some, but I don't want to smoke it. So if I can find a way of getting weed into me without having to smoke it and then find somebody to supply me with it, um, I, 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 that's why I'm asking, I'm asking questions to, you know, from a place of care, but also interest. You know, where, where, where are these mythical objects that can get weed into me without me actually having to smoke it? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, my God, bless you. <laughs> I'm an introverted extrovert. I'm an extra, I'm an extra, extra. I am a seriously natural. Um, how you see me here is how I am in life, right? I am the person, right, that when you get to the party, I am the person that actually gets all them fuckers out of the kitchen and into the main room and actually having a party. I, I'm the bloke that gets people on bus stop queues talking to them, each other. I am the person that gets people on trains talking to each other. That's me. All right? That is me. I'm the one that gets the party started. Tracy's met me in real life. She knows I'm exactly like this. All right? I am. I yeah. am a serious extra. I can't stand people that just sit there. I can't stand people on trains that just sit there and don't talk to each other. I'll get that whole fucking train. You, I, you see me at the pub stream, right? I get complete fucking strangers chatting on stream. Yes. Don't I? Even if I don't speak yes. the same language as them. Do you want 
you want a pint? You want a pint? Do you want a pint? <laughs> I'll put a brother off the street and get him on the screen, even if they don't speak the same language. You remember that Bulgarian soldier? The Ukrainian soldier. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It was you going, you want a pint? You want a pint? I've got a new friend, Ukrainian. Yeah. Do you want a pint? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm a complete extrovert. Right? I'm 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 extroverted, but I think I'm the opposite to Mickey. Mickey, what did you say? You were an extroverted introvert or an introverted extrovert? Introverted extrovert. Extrovert. Why would you yeah. say that you're that? Because I'm here on the stream, but I'm still. I understand what Mickey means. I'm still the quiet one, if yeah. you like. And I think I'm the opposite. I think I'm an extroverted. I wanted to say in, introvert. I, I'm an extrovert, but also I do like keeping myself to myself. And I can be very quiet and I can keep things not. Well, I like keeping myself to myself when I'm watching porno. <laughs> Jim, Jim, you would love my my husband Andrew. He's exactly the same. No, he's not. He's, he's a he's ginger been... alien. Don't believe a word she he's... says, right? Your husband is a ginger alien that is here purely to harvest organs. But he can still hate most people and be selective who, who he wants to talk to. <laughs> yep. Yep. And the last organ he, the last organ he harvested was from Lowe's to yep. fucking church. Yep. Oh, God. Is that something that's happened? Somebody's half inch the organ? No. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> the moment's gone, Tracy. The moment's gone. No, I was asking. The Lowest Off Church. I wanted to know what the reference to that was. The moment has gone. Okay. Steve said he's harvested organs. I said, yeah, the last organ he harvested was Lowest Off Church. It's not funny. Oh. Or well, maybe to you it is, but you know. Huh? <laughs> uh, right, yes, look, it's, exactly. it's, it's nearly ten past time. I'm, I'm not here. Right, exactly. So, shall we fuck off? Yeah, we're going to fuck off. Yeah. So on that note, I'm going to say <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say good night. So good night from me. I'll leave the other two to say goodbye. Good night, guys. See you Monday, normal time, nine forty-five UTC GMT. Good night from me. Stay safe. Keep your family safe, and we'll see you Monday.